and we're live. We have a cue to call, right? Uh, we do. Uh, well, look, I mean, we're, we're trying to calibrate things as we head into the draft. Uh, we're using the software that we will be using at the draft. And so, obviously, you have weird things happen. Don't know it just reset on me. It re the the brick reset on me. Yeah. Apparently when you hit the uh yeah, when you hit the uh the 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 go do radio show button, you have to start the brick over. See, that ladies and gentlemen is why we're doing this because it's a lot better to do this on the Friday before the draft than doing it live in Detroit. So Uh, literally, we have talked nothing but to each other this way. And your audio on YouTube died and mine on the radio died. So... Uh, it feels like smoke. It, it, it feels like it, it. I can't tell you that there's absolutely nothing to this Jaden Daniel report. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And I mean, look, do I understand that Jaden may not love Washington? I do. I, I also understand that there's a great possibility that there's nothing he can do about it because you're universally the second best prospect in this class. Uh, at the quarterback position, Washington has the second pick, and they're not going to get a shot at Caleb Williams. 
I mean, look, if I was Jaden Daniels, I would want to go one to Chicago too. And that's probably where this came from. It may be true. It just, what does it mean exactly? And I, I don't think it's much of anything, to be really honest with you. I, I mean, not not particularly. I, I mean, look, th are things happening in Washington that are a little bizarre? Yes. I, I've heard that. I, I heard that through the coaching process. I've now heard that through the draft process. I'm not even really surprised by that anymore. It's Josh Harris is a different guy, and he's going to have to figure this out. The question is, does he go the, the David Tepper route of you just keep repeating the same mistake over and over and over and over and over, and over again? Or are we going to get through this process? He'll figure out what he did right. He'll figure out what he did wrong. And then a year from now, you're in better shape. No owner comes into sports and, and is immediately great. There's not one. I, and frankly, I, I'll just tell you from my team, Woody Johnson is one of the 10 richest people in America. It was a little clunky to start with. It's been clunky at times since. But he's gotten better every single year. And then you, what the reason that we have such a microscope on this is that you had to hire the coach, you had to bring, and you're bringing in the quarterback in the same offseason. That does not happen a lot. It happens to some teams more often than others, but it doesn't happen a lot. will get better at this thing but as we've seen in carolina that's not a ex years don't really matter all that much you got to be willing to roll with uh roll with the times and bad ownership is just bad ownership no doubt hopefully this doesn't stick with the washington commanders and, nor and do i think it will i don't either i, I don't think that i don't think it's going to be a consistent problem either it, it's just a question of can you get through this year doing things your NBA way and still draft your franchise quarterback? Well, there's no doubt that they can do that. The question is, which one? And does any of this matter with Jaden Daniels? So the, the agent's not happy with the commanders, apparently, over this visit. Did they even say what it was? I did not see that were there, they said what Were there any specifics that were given? Because I I haven't seen them. Well, there's another way to look at this, too. Because this is an unnamed source, and we don't know exactly where it came from. There's another report out today from OutKick about trades and, and how much we have talked about all of these ideas that, that the Cardinals or the Chargers, maybe even New England, could trade down. Have you seen the report I'm talking about? No, I have not. So basically, and I would have to look to see, I think it was Armando Soguero, it basically said that no team in the top five has a firm trade offer in hand right now. Mm -hmm. Six days before we kick off the first round of the draft, nobody has an offer in hand. And if they do, it's so far away from actual value that it's not even worth talking about. Yeah. No, I... Absolutely. Did you, I mean, the story came out of uh, the, the, the Chargers. Um, Joe Hortiz was saying that, well, I mean, you could make us an offer, but I'm not interested in a, quote, fair trade. 
There is no such thing as a fair trade when it comes to my pick at five. So you're going to have to make me an offer I can't refuse, basically, to be able to get this pick away from me because we feel like we have the number one pick in the draft. They're expecting somebody to trade up to the four spot with Arizona, or at least that's what they're selling to the media right now, of we have the number one pick because all these quarterbacks are going to go one through four. So we're in the catbird seat for non-quarterback players. I'm it not so case, sure that's accurate. But I doubt it. I, I I doubt it as well. I mean, look, we've never had a draft where quarterbacks went one, two, three, four. But if you but if you're trying to sell a pick, that's what you would say. Well, if you if you're not really I mean, I don't wanna sell this pick, but if I'm gonna, this is exactly what I would tell everybody of okay, you may not need a quarterback. I can't get you a quarterback because the top four are all quarterbacks. But I can get you Marvin Harrison Jr. or I can get you Roma Dunze or whoever you're looking at outside of the quarterbacks. I have the number one pick. And if you want it, you're going to have to go hard in the paint, basically. Well, I mean, and I get that. I think the narrative that you're selling the pick, quote unquote, is really stupid. I mean, look, it's too easy for me to see through these things. And I'm just a media idiot. I mean, it's not like I'm the GM of the Arizona Cardinals. I'm not Monty Ossenfort or or um, uh, Quesia Dofamensa or J- George Payton or Sean Payton. I mean, you could convince me of anything you want to. It doesn't actually do anything for you. You have to convince them, and this has not been super hard to see through. The media has had this just fixation that we're going to have four quarterbacks go in the top four. I don't really know anybody with teams that agrees with that. Mm -hmm. I hear it so much from media people that are plugged in more than I am that it can, it can sway me and it has swayed me at times, but it's never really resonated to the point it made sense. So now a week out, I'm hearing Jaden Daniels doesn't want to be in Washington. No team in the top five has a, a, a firm trade offer at something they would accept. Does that not all feel like it's staring in the same man? There's a lot of teams that would trade down if they could. Yes. You also yes, had an article. Almost... Go ahead. Go ahead. I, all I was going to say was you, you have uh, Elliot Wolf was out there in front of the media yesterday as well, talking about the Patriots at number three, and he was like, "Yeah, we can we can keep it, but we're open to doing anything." I think all of these teams, if you're willing, if you're willing to, you know, if you really want it, you can get all the way to three. To me, that kind of says something about the quarterbacks, because I don't think if you were really sold, you'd ever say this. You'd ever say that we were open. No doubt. To trading that pick. If I'm dead set and I'm I'm in love with Drake May and I'm in love with Jaden Daniels, as we've been led to believe that the Patriots are. If they're in love with both of them, and they'll be fine taking either one of them. Why would you even say that we're open for business? Because you're not. Because it's not true. I mean, if you if you cut through the the uh, bull squirt, then I think it's pretty easy to figure out that the Chicago Bears are in love with Caleb Williams. It's pretty easy to figure out that the Washington Commanders and New England Patriots are in love with Jaden Daniels. It's pretty easy to figure out that the Minnesota Vikings are not in love with J.J. McCarthy. They are indeed in love with Drake May, as I think I've said 500 times, and that Denver doesn't love any of them. It's not that hard to figure out. Now, could a team make a move if the value comes in? Sure. Maybe. But I think it's more likely that this goes how we have said it would go for an extended period of time is that New England's going to get stuck on the clock at three. They're going to have to take Drake May. And then Marvin Harrison goes four, Malik Neighbors goes five, and the draft really starts at six. Now, the Chargers could throw a wrench in that and take Joe Alt, but that top four, I kind of struggle to see how it's not going to go that way. No, the top four, I think, is cemented because I don't see the deal coming. I I, I think the fact that every, every team at the top has continued to leave the door open that they would trade down. I'm not necessarily sure that's a good thing. Like I said, 
four quarterbacks in the top four would make you think this is the greatest quarterback class of all time, and it is so far from it that it's pathetic. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's it, it's absolutely not. I would say this if is closer to 2021 than it is to any other class I've ever evaluated. Yeah, if anybody makes the move, I'm still sold. It's gonna be what well, it's gonna be Minnesota. They will move to three, so they can get Drake instead of getting JJ McCarthy. Because I still think New England's the only one that would possibly trade down. And le- and let me just say, I think this is um, this is only and if a deal happens, this is the one that's going to happen. But I don't think there's a deal coming. I think everybody gets stuck where they're at, and I think everybody's fine with it. Nobody's going to miss out because they didn't get to trade down or that they didn't get to trade up. I don't think the pick of Drake May at three, while I believe he's going to be a good pro, I don't think that'll be one years from now that Minnesota looks back and goes, damn, I wish we could have got that deal done. I, that I'm not so no sure I agree with you. Really? I'm not, I'm not so sure I agree with you, and and there's a very specific reason why I believe that. We got to take a commercial break. I want to talk about that when we come back. Okay. Because I want you to, in the break, think about the difference between these two teams with Drake May and without him, and I think you're going to see something. You're in the Sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400. I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation. Clear. Heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduced stroke risk better than warfarin. And over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. It's the Marketer's Report. Today, Capital One's Chief Brand Officer, Mark Mentry, weighs in on building loyalty with customers. Capital One has really worked to create amazing access moments for our customers. We will do sound check parties that only Capital One cardholders can get access to, and we can't pull that off without iHeart. As the number one audio company, iHeart Media gives marketers access to the audiences, insights, and data you need to grow. If you're a marketer, go to iHeartResults.com. I love a beautiful lawn. I hate doing lawn care. That's why I use True Green. They're the official lawn care treatment provider of the PGA Tour. And we all know those are some nice greens. So just imagine what they could do for your lawn. All you have to do is water and mow. And to top it off, when you sign up for an annual plan by April 20th, get one application free. Visit TrueGreen.com for the best lawn at the best price, guaranteed. Restrictions apply. It's the VC Show. What's up? I'm Vince Carter, and my podcast, The VC Show, is coming back. Season two of The VC Show is going to be bigger and better than ever. Every week during the NBA season, I'll give you my real insights and opinions on the league. Vince Savage reigns supreme. Subscribe to the pod and listen to The VC Show with me, Vince Carter, on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. It's the VC we're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brewing. Number one, beat the heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine and zero sugar. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from. White Haze, Heat Perfect, Scary Berries, and my personal favorite, Mean Green. And number three at 6% ABV, Max Protect. Always drink responsibly and you must be 21 or over. Beast Unleashed, available at your local retailer. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality fresh items for your family table, it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. 
Ingalls. Low prices, love the savings. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast. The Sportsocracy. That is some good, clean family fun there, eh, Kai? Oh, you got to hit the right button, Tank. That's all it comes down to. It is a Friday here in the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. And, um, yeah, I, as I was saying before the break there, I, I don't really think that this that Drake is going to be so good at the next level that Minnesota will feel like it ruined their franchise that they didn't get a deal done if they can't move up to three with the New England Patriots. Okay, so to and me, you disagree. I I do, I, okay. I, I do disagree with you, and here's why. Do you think there is any chance? I mean, I'm talking snowball's chance in Atlanta that they go into the season with Sam Darnold as their only quarterback. No then you're going to waste a pick somewhere. Point blank, period. You're either going to take J.J. McCarthy at, I would say, best case capital-wise scenario, you're going to take J.J. McCarthy at 11. You'll get another mm-hmm. good player at 23. And which would you rather have? Drake may throw into Justin Jefferson, or you waste the 11th pick, in my opinion, on J.J. McCarthy and add another defensive player. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Because Drake May will go to New England and get absolutely obliterated. With no weapons whatsoever, I've seen this. I watched this at the end of the year when he and Tez Walker just were not on the same page, and that's what you get in New England. I think New England knows that too, which is why Elliot Wolf is looking at every camera that will point itself at him to say, hey, you know, we're not, what's it? We're still open for business. If, <laughs> if you want to do business, we're open to it. Because they want Jaden Daniels. If Jaden were to fall to three, that's the reason they will not make a move unless they're on the clock. New England will start that 10-minute clock sitting at three. Mm-hmm. I'm just not sure they're going to make that pick. Because the Drake May thing, outside of Peter Schrager, every person I have talked to has said New England's not in love with Drake May. Minnesota is, which means they're going to give up quite a bit to get down there. And then I look at the flip side of New England. All right, let's say, let's say now that Arizona's put it out there that they want three ones to move down. You almost have to get that, or people are going to think you got taken advantage of. Yes. That's one of the things that, hey, Monty Austin for you should really learn that uh, you, you should talk less sometimes. Because New England would bail out for 11-23 plus, I think. I don't think they would sit at three if Minnesota offered their, oh, they don't have a two next year. Uh, they, I don't think they have a two t- until the next presidential election. <laughs> but if Minnesota offered 11-23, maybe a player and and another pick, I think New England would trade down. Okay. Because look how much better you feel about New England taking Roma Dunze or even Jared Verse or somebody like that or Quinion Mitchell, whoever it is at 11. Maybe take Michael Penix at 23. Look how much better you feel about that roster. Mm-hmm. You add a couple players, hey, now we're going to play really good defense. Penix can hit a home run every now and then. As opposed to, we got Drake May and nobody else. That trade makes too much sense to me almost not to happen. I get, I, I get, I mean, it makes sense on paper. You want the, you know, you, know, you want a potential star quarterback to go with your potential star wide receiver. It makes sense for New England because we don't have that potential star weapon to pair him with it's kind of a kind of a different build all right let me ask you a question this is right because because yesterday you had eli wolf up there on the podium and he was saying we are a uh what was it he said we are a developmental team so at this stage in the developmental process uh (laughs) do you do you want to go ahead and start that rookie clock on a on a quarterback? Or with that statement, is he telling you exactly where he's at? Of we would move if they can. I, I okay. fully think they can. They won't move out if Jaden Daniels is there. 
That's why I keep looking at that outkick story going, no team has an offer that they would accept. Okay, but you didn't say they didn't have an offer. It was just not enough for them to acknowledge right now. And so yeah. you start reading the semantics of how this is said. If Jaden Daniels is, a, is there at, at three, of which do not underestimate, do not underestimate the possibility that New England is who floated that about Jaden Daniels. If he's there at three, they stay pat. If not, I know Minnesota loves Drake May. I'll drop out like Tyson Carter just said in our YouTube chat. They could take Ola Fashano at 11, take a, a receiver at 23, 80 Mitchell, somebody like that. And then if you're dead set on it, you could trade back into the back, it, those last couple picks in the first round and take Michael Penix. You're telling me you don't feel better about that than just, hey, we got Drake May. Because I'll go ahead and tell you, I would. Yeah, when we, when, when we did our head-to-head -head mock draft the other day, we had the deal happen. Minnesota trades up to three and gets Drake. New England drops down to 11, and I picked Quinion Mitchell. And how terrifying could that be? And how much better of a build can that be than having a quarterback with no weapons as to, you know, I have a defensive head coach. We're building on the defensive side. We're building this. Kind of you said the other day that the the Belichick way was was going out the door in New England. It has. And you're and you're and you're right in some respects, but I think the build is gonna be similar. It'll be built on strong defense and, you know, hopefully modernize the offense from Bill's days. But it'll be something similar. Well, I mean, the, the, the opposite side of this is just think about what I'm getting ready to say. We, we value New England to be strong from the top down, right? Uh, you've got Bob Kraft. This is a team that I don't think is going to get taken advantage of, right? You're not going to see them get annihilated right. in a trade. Bill no. did, Bill drafted off board, but he didn't get annihilated in trades. Let's just say that did happen. Minnesota's so in love with with Drake May that there's there's nothing that they won't do, and they will pony up to go up and get him. And then New England trades down to eleven. Let me ask you a question that I don't think anybody in any form of media has asked that I've heard yet. If New England did that, do you see any shot they would come up to take J.J. McCarthy? No. I don't either. You know why? Because that's a smarter franchise. I would sit at 11 and go, hey, you know what? If someone wants to trade up in front of me, I'll get Michael Penix at the beginning of the second, end of the first. And there are a lot of people that think he's a better quarterback in the first place. That's what smart teams do. They don't get manipulated by the media. They don't get manipulated by rumors and by smoke. They go get their guy. And I've heard way too many people say that Drake May's not their guy. Now, I, I do want to address something that happened in the YouTube chat. Bill Budacek asked, can you explain why Drake May wouldn't work in New England? Houston had one weapon when they selected C.J. Stroud. They did have one legit weapon when they selected C.J. Stroud. They had also added a veteran in Robert Woods. They drafted Tank Dell. They had Noah Brown, who was a high-level flyer, and they added Dalton Schultz. New England has Hunter Henry and Devontae Parker. Those two things are vehemently different. Oh, and by the way, C.J. Stroud's a different prospect. C.J. Stroud walked into a situation where he had a lot of young receivers who just so happened to develop at the same time. Unless you have a really big faith in Demario Douglas and K.J. Osborne, you don't have that. You don't have the guy that can be propped up to another level. Now, they could add people, as Bill said. The problem is that you've already started the rookie clock on Drake May. So, yes, you can add people a year from now. You spend a lot of money retaining this roster. You're not really going to be a big player in free agency this upcoming offseason, this next offseason. So you're looking at going into his third year before you have the weapons around him he would really need you got to make a decision on him the next year. That doesn't make a ton of sense to me. And Drake May's way more raw than people want to let on. That's why I've always said at the, since this process started and since we identified, you know, New England was going to be picking 
you know, way early in the season last year, they were going to be picking this high in the draft. Was it, you have a you have a tough decision to make. Do you do you go after the quarterback because you have to because you're you're here because you're in the top three. You go after the quarterback because that's what the rules, quote unquote, say you need to do. The rules that we've all kind of lived by in the NFL or the franchises have lived by forever. If I'm picking high, I'm taking a chance on my quarterback because I don't know when I'm going to be back here to get another one. I've always thought that that, that, that that really weighs into this situation with New England. Just tell me the situation. They're not going to be back here to take another one. Look around the AFC. Tell me. Do, all we right. win, do we win? Do we think that there's a chance that we win six, seven games with this roster? Answer your own question. I, I, I don't believe it's going to happen. There you go. That, that's the point. Minnesota, I actually believe there is no path that Minnesota is going to be in as good a situation to take a quarterback again. Because you've got 11 and 23, you can get up to three to get a guy you're in love with. New England, there's a great chance they have the number one pick in the draft next year. That roster is not good. And you're giving Gerard Mayo all the time in the world. You're not giving Kevin O'Connell another year. Th this is your shot. If you're If you're in a position to take that quarterback next year, you're in a position to take a uh, to sign a new head coach because Kevin O'Connell is going to be in the unemployment line. Do you see what I'm saying with that? Of New England's in a different position than Minnesota is. Mm -hmm. Minnesota has the best receiver in the NFL. By the way, the receiver I kept talking about with New England, I was talking about Kendrick Bourne. I don't know why I keep calling him Devontae Parker. <laughs> in my head, they have become the same person for some reason. I apologize. Red Sea also had a good point about a lot of the credit to Houston talking about C.J. Stroud goes to Domingo Ryans. Is there a possibility Gerard Mayo is that? Sure. If Gerard Mayo is that, I'm not sure you're not in better shape with Michael Penix in a one-year setting than you are with Drake May. Right. Look, I love Drake. Drake's my number two quarterback in this class. I've got Drake and Jaden Daniels ahead of Caleb Williams because he scares the heber jeebers out of me. But I don't love the situation of either one of them going to New England. It's cold. It's tough to play there. Tom made it look really easy. And outside of Drew Bledsoe, name me the third best quarterback in the history of that franchise. That's not ironic. Can't, can't do it. I mean, and, and if you think that's just, well, the, you're, you're taking that out of context. Okay, do the same thing with the Buffalo Bills, the New York Jets, and the New York Giants. All four of those teams play in cold weather places. It takes a very specific kind of quarterback to play there. And I'm not sure that's Drake May. I'm not sure it's it's Jaden Daniels, to be 100% honest with you. I would feel better about Jaden. It's a tough decision or a tough place to be in. New England, do you move out? Do you, do you, do you stand pat? And again, is anybody giving you the offer? As, as you said, Jeremy, the report was there is no offer. Outkick reporting that there is no offer in hand for any team in the top five. And I think that has a lot to do with why we've uh, seen all of these teams say what they've said over the last two days. You've had the commanders, who I don't think there's any chance that they move. Every time that subject comes up with Adam Peters, he always says, well, we haven't we hadn't made our decision, but it'd be we'll hard be for me soon. to move. Right, but we'll be there soon. And then at three is where you've got the, the the chatter. The Patriots saying that they're open to moving down. They're open to moving up, he said. I don't think they're doing that. I don't either. I don't know, I don't know what you're going to put together to move up. Maybe later rounds is what he was referring to. But I don't think he's moving up. But if they could move down, maybe they would. I still think you only have one dance partner in that blow me away offer i'm not i'm not really sure it's coming because again minnesota's bidding against themselves because who else wants to move up there nobody uh, denver arguably but i don't think yeah. denver would do it i, I just look at denver, denver and hasn't even go ahead i was gonna say denver hasn't even been in any of these discussions the reason that Denver the hasn't one. been maybe there is because the they don't have the capital. The, the problem with, yeah. with Denver is they don't have the capital. 
they'd have to give up the next three first round picks just to get up there. I don't think Sean Payton is doing that for this class. I I just don't see it. I also look at Denver and New England. No matter what you do, let's say Drake May is rookie of the year level good. What does that lead to in the AFC? Best case scenario, how do these two teams finish? Oh, gosh. Six wins, maybe. I would say seven at most. You're not making the playoffs. Mm Mm-mm. And so I just struggle to believe a team is going to give up that much capital picks that are this good looking at what Carolina just did. Carolina gave up the number one pick in this draft for a quarterback last year because they stepped out of line. And I haven't heard a soul mention that through this entire process. Not when talking about Minnesota, not when talking about Denver, not when talking about the New York Giants. There's a great chance you do the same exact thing. It's always a risk. It's always a risk when you feel like you have to make the leap. A team like Minnesota, they're in the same spot that Carolina was last year. Of, uh, do we have to make the leap? Well, you're in a better position to do so. I feel like, don't you? In this scenario, I, I, I would, I would advise, I would, you know, last year I would have advised Carolina, don't do that. This year, I think I would. Minnesota to do it I just don't know that it's coming you're in the sportsocracy and this is ESPN Asheville 92.9 FM 880 AM and 1400 when we come back it'll be time to get just a bit outside this is your exergen temporal scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville clear rolling into our Friday afternoon and some showers thunder showers around Nothing too widespread but some of the stronger storms may produce some gusty winds and small hail there's a small risk of a tornado Upper 70s tonight, chance of showers and thunderstorms continues mainly early, 55. A cooler Saturday, some fog early, then partly sunny and breezy. Upper 60s, then on Sunday, more rain possible. The high in the mid-50s. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Juicy Juice. Juicy Juice is 100% juice, which means Juicy Juice is only sweetened by the fruit with no sugar added, no high fructose corn syrup, and no artificial sweeteners. Try all of the delicious flavors. Find Juicy Juice at your favorite local grocery retailer. Info at JuicyJuice.com. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it, and at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocols, and everything they were doing is consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Sheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics, 828-333-9517. That's 828-333-9517. 828-333-9517. eBay Motors is here for the ride with the parts you need at the prices you want. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they're guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a Southern hospitality touch. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, 
you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC brokered by EXP Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or clarissasellswnc at gmail.com. Boy, you must be outside your mind. The sportsocracy. Just a bit outside. He tried the corner and missed. We are back in the sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. 92.9 92.9 FM, 880 AM, 1400. Heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. And uh, Jeremy Green, it's time to get just a bit outside. And uh, I'm going to go to college here for a second. Memphis is getting a big donation. Over the next five years, FedEx has announced that they are going to be uh, pouring $25 million, $5 million a year into an NIL deal for the Memphis Tigers. So now, I mean, this is a culture change for Memphis because this will be the first time that they've done things above board at Memphis. Yeah. Well, I mean, when they hired <laughs> Penny Hardaway, who I think he was giving out $20 million deals too. Just Well, and who was the coach, uh, you know, a couple of spots before that was Coach Cal. So, you know, they're 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 used to doing some shit. No doubt. Stuff. I mean, they're used to they're used to paying <laughs> players. It's just the first time they'll be able to tell people they're doing it and not pay them in yes. McDonald's bags. Exactly. $5 million a year, a uh, pretty big deal for a school that is not in a Power 5 conference. They're in the AAC still, and uh, the NIL game is the way that you're going to win. Now, Memphis just has to get the uh, AutoZone people in for another 5 mil, and they can, they can compete with uh, everybody in the NIL space. That's the only other big employer there, other than the St. Jude's Hospital. I don't think you should be spending St. Jude's money on uh, no. That's NIL that's bad, deals for uh, college that's, athletes. That's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see uh, uh, the FedEx on all these. I can't wait to see what a FedEx NIL deal looks like. You order a package, you order a basketball player. Guess what? We'll both let you down. Sorry. <laughs> My story's about. No, this is the good thing that after the basketball career fl- flails out, then they can go to work for FedEx later. But it's better that they're in Home Depot. Let's go. Yes. My story's about Caitlin Clark. A lot was made that her rookie deal was only three hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars over four years, mm-hmm. and I get it. I also get really irritated at when people try to. Well, they should make more. Well, then you should buy more tickets because that's how no we. Doubt. It was. We can start bumping up salaries the first time you turn a profit. It's Facts coming. don't care about your feelings. You or swear that's coming. I'm not as sure. I think it's coming. I think we're here. I don't know. I th- look, they to lost money last least, year. To where at least becomes solvent. Solvent, so I think, is subsidized anymore. Solvent, I think you can expect to to believe that you're getting into seven figure salaries anytime soon i think is no. we ain't there yet no however no, no, no. that's that's far off however uh caitlin clark has done something that's going to pay her a lot of money uh she signed a deal with nike she's got she's going to get her own exclusive shoe which you mark my words they will sell 11 gajillion pairs of Yes. As the father of a teenage basketball player, I will go ahead and tell you, there's going to be a mess of these sold. <laughs> They're already on back order. You're going to see them on a lot of high school basketball, girls basketball floors uh, across the country. How much do you think this deal paid her? We don't have an exact figure, but we do have a, a rough estimate. Mm, $15 million. You're too low. It's worth nice. more than $20 million, according to Sham Sharania. Good for her. That's huge. Now, the question is, does anybody else get that deal, or do you have to be chasing the points record? Well, will Juju Watkins yeah. do this, or Paige Beckers? or That's when you'll know if this has staying power. Yes, exactly. You have a one-of-a-kind athlete that has changed the game. The question is, is that going to filter out to everybody else? Hell, uh, Dawn Staley 
I was reading an article with an interview, you know, recapping an interview of her yesterday where she said, you know, women's college basketball, we we were only popular this year because of Caitlin Clark. She's not like calling for, you know, doom and gloom here, but but I think she's right. You got a massive bump because you had Caitlin Clark. You know, there were some in the that pushed back with me in the YouTube chat when I said the other day that that we were watching because of the record. Well, maybe you weren't watching because of the record, but a lot of people were. If she wasn't chasing that record, nobody would have cared. I guess my problem is, did anybody even know who had the record beforehand? No. No, because it didn't become a thing until she was going to pass Pistol Pete. That's where I get into th- That's where I'm at with this. Is It's hard for me to believe that people were, were locked in on a record that they didn't know whose record they were breaking. So mm-hmm. that's it. Because that's, you couldn't sell that. You, it, I mean, I, mean I, I continue to say this. Hats off to ESPN because it, it, it finally worked. The years and years that they have been shoving this content to the f- forefront, and I get why you did it. You got the contracts, and it's your product, and you have to do that. You you got to promote your own self, right? I'm not I'm not denigrating them for that. What I'm saying is, they jumped in at a perfect time here, or not jumped in. They've had it for a long time, but I'm saying the push was at the perfect time for the perfect player for the perfect scenario. No, you weren't going to say she's out here chasing down. I don't even remember the woman's record that she broke because she had beaten Pistol Pete, right? Didn't she break Pete's record and then she got to the all-time record? Yes, I I think that's correct. Either way, nobody but women's basketball historians knew who that was. Nobody knew that name because there was nothing after that. Right, Pete became a star in college, yes, but he also had a 10-year NBA career where he was doing crazy things. Time makes stars. This is why Caitlin worked, was because she was at Iowa for th- three years. And everybody got to grow with it because the legend grew year by year. It she did. didn't really get popular until last year. And then she had the ultimate showdown with Angel and the LSU. And then she's got another year to come back. So we're back for another year. And now we're chasing records. And now we're chasing the elusive championship that still didn't come. Caitlin was a perfect storm for women's sports. It's awesome that it got the bump that it did. Now you're in a whole new ball game, though. That's Nike's the question is, where spending, does it go right, from here? Right. Nike's out here spending $20 million on Caitlin Clark. I don't, uh, you know, they're, they're going to get their money. They're going to make their money. They're going to sell all the shoes in the world. But does the career go anywhere? Does the viewership go up? Does it sustain while she's in the WNBA? You know, she doesn't come in and win right away. Jeremy, you and I have talked about this. If it doesn't, if she doesn't win right away and they they're losing, how long are people going to stick with the whole Caitlin Clark train? Look, nobody nobody will follow a loser. And I'm talking about the team, no. not her. So if she comes in, you're going to get that bump the first two games. You and I have talked about this multiple times. I, I, I think it's it's going to last much longer than that. I am not so sure that it I mean, because you've because because you've I mean, you've already got uh, as far as attendance records go. I mean, they're going to set every one of them. You're right. I, the, I don't Indiana dispute any of that. will set every attendance record. You've got other WNBA teams already selling so many tickets that they're having to move their games with Indiana to different stadiums. I think DC's team just had to do that. Move to a bigger arena because there's the ticket demand is so great for the Indiana games. She's going to sell like this for a while. But what does it do to the TV product? Do you get people tuning in on a routine basis? Does the does the women's game in college does it suffer because now you're only down to what's her name Juju Watkins, and, right? And All and the Paige stars Packers. that we were told make this you know made this last tournament great. All those stars are gone except for her. Well, two. They're you all got in Paige the WNBA Beckers, now. You've got Beckers oh, who yeah, may right. be better I than Caitlin that. Clark. That that's yeah, my point is that you you're set up perfectly for this to continue. The question is, does it? 
Uh, and Tony Turntable said they should have done anything to keep Caitlin Clark. They tried. Uh, Twenty million dollars was never happening. That makes this make sense of why she left Iowa. There was there's just a, a school like Iowa. There's nobody there that can raise that kind of money in a year. I mean, even Caitlin Clark. I think she was the second most valuable college athlete in the country. She was at three point one million dollars. You're you're not beating Nike money. You know, as, as long no. as uh, Papa Phil's out here throwing around big checks, that'll always get them. It does make it make sense as to why she left. Mm-hmm. I was listening the other day. I can't remember who it was. It was somebody on the mothership, one of the Saturday shows, I think. And they were talking about Caitlin Clark and and this push for women's sports and women's basketball. And and, and it, was, it was likened to, what was it, the 99 World Cup? Remember how big women's soccer got there for a second when we when they won the World Cup and they had Mia Hamm and Brandy Chastain, Chastain and yeah, no, yeah, no 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 yeah. no boy that hit puberty between about 1995 <laughs> and 1999 will ever forget Brandy Chastain. Right for a moment there though, women's soccer was hot. Right, same thing. You go back to um, you you go back to the uh, the Pat Summit years. It was hot for a second. The early Yukon rain was hot for a second. Now we're back to Caitlin. This is bigger than anything we've ever had. Facts. But is this sustainable? Because none of it's been sustainable before. You catch on with one hot moment or, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the purple-haired soccer girl that we don't like talking about. Her and her, their, you know, that U.S. women's soccer team. Megan right? Rapinoe, that, so you're talking about. Yeah, 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 that's her. Um, I didn't want to say her name. Uh, I thought you, <laughs> but didn't you know had that it, so. run. No, 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 I was, you know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you you don't want you don't want it to just be the pop, right? That one pop, and then it disappears again, and then we're right back to where we were. Women's sports, I believe, has been building to a crescendo moment at some point. This looks like the best chance they've ever had to hit, to to be mainstream. I just don't know how you're going to continue it. I don't the NBA is does the NBA have to take over the WNBA's marketing and say and and help them with this to help them sustain this? Well, I mean I they've been, they've been doing that. Looking to the NBA to help you market stars would be like looking to me to help you quit drinking. I it's, it's just I'm not sure that's the way I would go. <laughs> okay. I, just, I, don't, I don't know how you keep it going. I know that's what every person in women's sports is doing right now, though, trying to figure out how we keep this going. The subject of, of changing the, the three-year rule in the WNBA, right? You got to be out of college three years or out of high school three years to be able to play in the WNBA. They have that same kind of rule. Uh, yes, and they and need to I, hold on to that for grim death. Precisely, but the but, but the talking heads I was listening to uh, earlier today were talking about how they needed to change that rule. No, 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 no. That's what you're doing better than men's basketball. Mm -hmm. If men's basketball had this, and we had the ability to be loyal to, to players and follow the players like we do in women's basketball, then you would be seeing successes as well. Well, I but mean, you're uh, not. Uh, you also you have don't. guys with the ability to transfer 16 times. I, I just uh, the NCAA to me is you so comically it's so comically bad right right all right we're gonna take a quick break when we come back from the break Jeremy you got picks for the night uh I do for the playing games all right green on green is coming up next here on ESPN Asheville <laughs> what are you doing I'm training for the new ultimate dash scratch offs I could get a chance to dash through a warehouse full of prizes. That explains the shopping cart. Plus, I could win up to two million dollars in cash. And that explains the tuxedo. I'm chafing. Feel the rush with new Ultimate Dash scratch-offs from the North Carolina Education Lottery. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds of winning are 1 in 3.78. Problem Gambling Helpline 877-718-5543. They're modern day con artists and they're the focus of Creating a Con, a true crime anthology podcast. Season 1 spotlights Ray Trapani and his tech startup scam, endorsed by DJ Khaled and Floyd Mayweather and built on empty promises and millions from built investors. 
If someone's like, oh, what's your best way of making money? I don't think start a business. I'm like, oh, we should start some sort of scheme. And I can't help it. Listen to Creating a Con on America's number one podcast network, iHeart. Open your free iHeart app and search Creating a Con. Join the Asheville Symphony Saturday, April 20th for Masterwork 6, Golden Glamour. From Vienna to Old Hollywood, we bring operatic charm and glamour to the stage with selections from Mailer and Mozart alongside Strauss's gorgeous De Rosenkavalier Suite and Violin Concerto by Korngold, an early Hollywood composer. Featuring Asheville favorite violinist Blake Paulette, 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. at the First Baptist Church of Asheville. Tickets at 828-254-7046 or AshevilleSymphony.org. Elevate your outdoor living space this year using stone. Tanzite has developed stone decking crafted without any plastic composite materials to redefine durability. Visit Tanzite.com to see how stone decking doesn't scratch, stays cooler, isn't slippery, and has all the durability you would expect from stone, which is why it's guaranteed for life. At Tanzite.com, you will see how we developed stone to easily transform any ordinary wood deck. You can even make your deck waterproof for a dry space below. Versatile and adaptable. Tanzite is perfect for decks, stairs, over concrete, or ground applications. Visit Tanzite.com to start planning your project with a free 3D design and construction plan tailored to your space. Order a sample today to witness the incredible beauty and durability firsthand at Tanzite.com. That's T-A-N-Z-I-T-E.com. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop customer apparel shops. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or Sells W. Here we go. Gmail.com. That's you. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on E. What happened? Oh. Right, rolling into our I have Friday no idea. I couldn't hear anything. Stutter, I didn't hear shower, the intro around. music. I didn't hear anything. Nothing too widespread, but some of the. Sh really? No, I heard nothing. Small hail. There's a small risk of a. Okay. He's tonight. The chance of showers and thunderstorms continues mainly early. 55. A cooler Saturday. Some fog early, then partly. Upper 60s. You said it was Sunday, May and then it just possible. went dead. From the high in the mid 50s. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is. Yeah, I was was waiting on you to go. <laughs> Which means did, I mean, juicy music juice play is or... by the. Yeah, I had music playing. Well, it's in the wrong channel or something because I didn't hear a bit of it. Try all of the. Yeah. First, find Juicy Juice at your favorite local grocery retailer. Info at juicyjuice.com. Woody and Wilcox. All the holidays are pet holidays now. <laughs> is that yeah, what it get is? Get ready for Cinco de Mayo. You and your dog doing shots together. <laughs> right. <laughs> so hard to teach your dog to suck the lime. Mm. Weekday morning starting at 6 on Asheville's Real Rock. Rock 105.1. I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduced stroke risk better than warfarin, and over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart 
heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases that risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability reason. to move. Get medical. No, no, no. I've, I, I've fixed it. I was playing it off my computer. You couldn't hear it. It wasn't in the... I was playing it on the air, but you couldn't hear it. Increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about... If that happens again, just start talking. Com or call I did start talking. Unlike right about the time that uh, the commercial broke in. Easy. Oh. <laughs> won't show up on an eye chart, and you won't find PTSD by looking at a thermometer. Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety won't just go away under a bandage. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, call 1-800-662-HELP for free and confidential information and treatment referral. Learn more at samhsa.gov support. The roof is the most important part of the home, and this month ESPN Asheville and Balkan Roofing are giving one away free of charge. Through April, go to ESPNAVL.com and click on the Balkan Roofing's Roofing for a Reason. Follow the link to nominate a homeowner in need of a new roof and why they should be our winner. At the end of the month, one iHeart Asheville winner will be selected. Make your nominations again at ESPNAVL.com. Roofing for a reason with Balkan Roofing. From the Ingle Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMX. Good call. An iHeart radio station. Now, your chance to win $1,000. Just enter this nationwide keyword on our website, green. That's green. Enter it now. Log on now to ESPNAVL.com. And good luck from your friends at ESPN Asheville. The Sportsocracy. It fires me up, man. I love it. Say it one more time. The Sportsocracy. Shake it back! Beer City's best sports talk. It is gross. Just earlier. They are mature, actually. You just have to... Get to know them better. Your lunchtime dose of dumbassery. Live from the Ingle Studio. It is ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400. We are the Sportsocracy, and we're heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app, seen everywhere on YouTube. Just go to the sportsocracy.com, click the live video link, subscribe to the channel. That way you can join us in the chat, get your thoughts in on all the thoughts of the day, all the latest news and rumors in the NFL draft. We got top 13s coming your way before the uh, end of the program today. Uh, we will get into some more top fives, top it, five draft picks of the last 40 years. If you were curious of the uh, picks in the last segment, A, that's why we did this on Friday as opposed to doing it at the draft. B, you heard it. I couldn't, so I had no idea when to start yes. talking. C, take the Miami Heat tonight. Take the Sacramento Kings tonight. <laughs> Very good. Heat and the Kings are Jeremy's picks for the night. Um, we'll, uh, we'll 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 get a green on green in here uh, at the end of the hour. How about that? Uh, that'll work. We yeah, can, we uh, we can make that up. Yeah, the, that the, was my bad. It was t- totally my bad. I've fallen on that sword. I wasn't feeding it properly down to you so you could hear it. We're doing the remote thing. We're all learning. Here we go. Hey, here's the um, thing. We learn together because <laughs> right. I was confident that I did it wrong. Uh, no, that's all right. Uh, we're all, we're all in, uh, in, in air here. Um, top 13s continuing here at ESPN draft nerd, Jeremy Green, Floster Damas giving us his top prospects in the 2024 NFL draft. And, uh, today let's do edge rushers. Normally this is one of those spots where we want to save it. Like, oh, we got to talk about all the killer edge rushers. That's yeah, not really not, the case this year. Not in this class, we don't. No. <laughs> I mean, you, there's not. Is there a single one that falls into that category for you that you would say that about? Did you go killer edge rusher? Uh, Jared Burse. He's my one. Mm-hmm. I think he's the best edge rusher in this class. I would take him in the top 10. I would not have a problem with it. And I'm absolutely dumbfounded how people are falling for Dallas Turner so hard at Jared Verse's expense. Why do you say it that way? Falling for him. Because Jared Verse or Jared Verse has better tape than Dallas Turner. 
That's not even really debatable to me. Then you look at they went to the combine. Turner runs the four four six. He's thinner. He's shorter. And he still can't play against the run. Like none of those things ever changed. And yet he runs the four four six, and we just lose our minds. Leatu Latu runs a four six four. We lose our minds. I, I don't get it. This is one of those times. And look, I'm not telling you that Dallas Turner is not going to be a good player. I feel like that's what people hear when I say things like this, is that Verse is going to be an all-pro and Dallas Turner is going to be working at FedEx. That's not it. I just don't understand how you take one over the other. I know exactly what – Jared Verse is going to come in and be a three-down defensive lineman the minute he gets into the league. I don't know that Dallas Turner will – ever be that now is there a possibility he's going to have more sacks in his career sure does that make him a better player no no does it make him more worth a top 10 pick no i can't wrap my brain around how a team would look at dallas turner as a top 10 pick i don't get it i can't fathom it to be really honest unless you. unless you believe that the pass rushing skills equate between him and verse and then maybe you see dallas as you know the guy who can stand up versus the guy who has to have his hand in the dirt i don't i don't think my only guess i don't think verse has to have his hand in the dirt i don't see how anybody thinks that that verse is not an equivalent pass rusher and all right let's say everything you just said was true it still doesn't change the fact that dallas turner can't hold up against the run that just that doesn't that math doesn't math to me in in any way verse is incredibly versatile played with less talent around him than Dallas Turner did oh and by the way I say this with every Alabama player name me the last Alabama player defensively specifically that played for Nick Saban went to the NFL and got better Will Anderson was a ready-made product when he came out Okay, we didn't have a problem with Houston taking him at three. We had a problem with what they gave up to go get him. And, oh, by the way, I still do. It just so happens that your pick was at 24 instead of four, like I thought it would be. But I feel like people are equating Dallas Turner to Will Anderson, and they're just not the same guy. Well, you 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 do that throughout the draft process, don't you? I, I mean – the media gets a hold of the of the list. These are the top guys in this class, and then you just keep hammering it. And eventually, Dallas Turner as the best pass rusher in the class, if that is what he is, you know, to 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 whoever's reading it or whoever's making their list, then he becomes that, right? He becomes the best pass rusher in the class, the guy that you have to flip over because it is a premium position, and we do that. <laughs> it's the same thing as quarterback. I mean, edge rusher and quarterback are similar to me in the way that we treat the prospects. You have a dog water quarterback class like we had a couple of years ago where Kenny Pickett was the first one off the board at 20. We were talking about those quarterbacks the same way that we talked about these quarterbacks. We had all the same people saying, oh, Peyton uh, uh, Willis or whatever the hell his name is. Malik Willis. Forget Malik Willis, thank you. Uh, Malik Willis is, uh, you know, going to go number one, and then we're going to have Sam Howell go number two. We were still doing that two weeks before that draft. The media pushes these guys to that level, and if you get at the top of your position class and you're a premium position class, whether you're worth it or not, you're going to be made into something that maybe you're not. Does that make sense? It, it does. Uh, okay. Andreas Pinkney in our YouTube chat had the one thing that I will say. If this is your excuse on Dallas Turner, I get it, is that they dropped him back into coverage a lot, and he was pretty good at that. If that's it, all right, I, I, mm -hmm. I get it. I'm not sure that Jared Verse can't do some of that as well but it still takes away – you do get he still can't play on the, on first down, right? I mean, it, and look, I, and Pinkney is right. That is a good point that he's a much better drop three, four outside linebacker right now. 
I'm not sure that that will always be the case. I am very sure he's never going to hold up on first down. Because he can't stop the run. He, he's just not a good run defender. He's thin. No. He's always going to be thin. No. All right. But so Jared versus one. Dallas Turner's two. Nope. No. Layatu Latu's my two. Okay. What pushes him above Dallas to you? Uh, same thing I just said. Latu can play on first down. Dallas Turner can't. No. Oh, okay. Uh, and I think he's a better pass rusher flat out. And then when I saw him run the agility drills at the combine, I th- I think Leatu Latu can actually be a stand-up outside linebacker. I felt pretty sure of that when I watched him on tape. Then I watched him move around, and I was confident of it. I feel like Leatu Latu is going to be the one that three years from now, we look back and go, hey, remember when we were worried about the medical on him? He's played three years and hadn't missed a game. Pass rusher in this class to me is almost, it's almost gotten to the point of it's the reverse Ricky Bobby rule. In the first round, I don't want to be first. I'm probably okay being last Mm -hmm. because I think they will go in the exact opposite order of how I'm going to take them here. I think you will get Dallas Turner, who is my three. I think he'll go first, then law to, then verse. Okay. How about number four? Uh, well, I, I I do want to talk about law to a, a little bit before we move on. Okay, sure. You, you do ahead. have to worry about the medical a little bit with him because he did medically retire, and there were schools that had no interest in him because they felt like he was done. Now, if you look at, at his time at UCLA, it didn't really seem to be much of a problem. So I'm not putting a lot of stock into it. I don't talk to a lot of people that are putting a lot of stock into it, but I do think it'll keep him outside of the top 15. Now we get to number four, and it's a guy that, Tank, I I know you like really, really well and could very well be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. That's Chop Robinson. (laughs) Chop Robinson out of Penn State. Yeah, he is. uh, He's just another special athletic freak. It's the kind of Penn State defender that you expect year in and year out. If you never measured this kid, I think we would talk about him with Verse and Latu and Turner. But you do. And then you get into some arm length problems, and he's only 254 pounds, and he's got really tiny little Kenny Pickett. Scoot, scoot, scoot! Hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he has nine and an eighth inch hands. That's superiorly small. I feel like we worry too much about the measurables with him and not enough about the tape. But, I mean, his motor just never stops. So, I mean, mm-hmm. this is exactly the kind of player I'd be looking for in the top ten or the last ten picks of the first round. With the hate on him had gotten ridiculous to where we were talking about him going in the end of the second, beginning of the third which to me was absolutely stupid. Now it's kind of leveled off a little bit, and and we're talking about him more where he belongs, which is in that mm-hmm. 20-ish range. Yep. I'm pretty sure your bucks are his drop-dead spot. They are. Uh, his his speed alone makes him just in, intoxicating. Uh, to think about him and the possibilities that he could have at the next level – Speed, agility, all that's not really a question with him. Nope. My question has to come in, what about what about the moves? Does he have the moves to be able to make the speed matter against left tackles, right tackles in the in the NFL? He does. The thing that the, the thing that you have to worry about is that he really almost always does the same thing. He doesn't have the wide array of moves. Now I, I will be honest with you. I say this probably about 70 to 80% of pass rushing prospects every year that we do this because there's just not a lot of ready-made prospects that come out. There are a lot of guys. Pass rushers to me are a lot like closers in, in baseball. They come up with one pitch. I only have about nine legit shots to use this a game. And so I don't ever bother learning another move. Now, in the NFL, yeah, they're, 
we pass more. So you get more pass rushing snaps no matter where you play. And so then you have to get the wide array of moves. And guys have hours upon hours to study tape of you so they know exactly what's coming. I'm not as worried about that with Chop. I know some people are. I'm just not one of them. I just think he needs a little bit more time, which is why he's not a top 20 pick. He's a 20 to 35 pick. Chop Robinson, six foot three, two hundred and fifty four pounds. Did you say? Uh, um, yes. Out of Penn State, as the number four edge rusher in this class for Floster Damas, Jeremy Green, who's number five. This is where this is going to get a little bit confusing because this guy is a. I feel like him and Dallas Turner are very similar to each other, and they played together. Uh, it's Chris Braswell. 6'3", 251, he's not as just freak fast, but he's freak athletic. And I think he will come in and win consistently. He's a lot stronger than Dallas Turner. I mean, a lot stronger. And I actually do feel like he has, I think he could build into something better against the run than what I've seen. I've heard a lot of people talk about he's only going to be a situational pass rusher, which is why they have him in the the late second, sometimes early third round. And to me, that's just insane because I do think he can hold up against the run. I mean, the kid squats 700 pounds. That's a considerable from a kid that was, he bulked up for the combine, and I can't remember now what he weighed in at, 250, 251. Yeah. Yeah, he bulked up to that. He played at roughly 235. So, I, I mean, I just think there's more to him. Not that Nick didn't get it out of him. That's just not what Nick asked him to do. Dallas Turner, I don't necessarily think it's there. That's the, the difference. Now, he's not as good of a pass rusher as Dallas Turner, which is why he's here. But I could see a path that he develops into a really solid three-down outside linebacker at the next level. He is one of those that it is it is hard to deny the power that 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 guy has in him. And even when he was running the drills in at the combine in Indianapolis, you could you you could see it. And I agree with you. I think he is. I think he's going to be a great value for somebody if he does end up going in that late second, third round area. I think it could be quite the steal. I will tell you, there has been. There is one team that appears to really like Chris Braswell that picks at the end of the first round. And I'm not saying I'm putting a huge amount of money on it, but I might have a shekel on him going at the end of round one. To who? Detroit. Really? Hmm. Detroit is notoriously open in the Brad Holmes era about guys they like. There's not a lot of... They don't hide a lot because they don't really care about th – their board is their board. There's no, oh, we'll wait to take him in the second round and then you get burned. If he's the best player on the board, that's who they're taking, period. Yes, yes. And that's I know they, they are – That's why they took Jameer Gibbs at 11 and then Jack Campbell at, what was it, 19. 17, 18? Yeah. And one of those worked out really well. One of them left a lot to be desired, but you still nailed it with Laporta and Branch in the second round. Yep. Uh, by the way, there is a great possibility that we're going to be talking about that Lions class the same way we talk about that Jets class and that Saints class uh, that we've mentioned a couple times this week. I was going to say, say stop, stop, burying, stop trying to bury Jack Campbell. It's been a year, okay? He'll, he'll be fine. And linebacker is notoriously hard to learn. I get it. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It is. Um, well, and, and that's interesting you say that about Chris Braswell because yesterday, I think we talked about it yesterday, um, that or, or day before yesterday that I had seen a report that Detroit would not pass on um who was it uh, Darius Robinson. Robinson Darius Robinson if he were there I'm not so pick. sure that that's true and I, I've, I've, I've heard that maybe they're trying to throw times. everybody off of Braswell oh I was the one that told you the Darius Robinson thing I just don't buy it I, 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 you step up there and with the 29th pick, the Detroit Lions take Darius Robinson. Well, I guess I was wrong. That wasn't smoke. But until you do that, I'm not going to believe you. Not buying it. 
All right, Chris Braswell out of Alabama, number five on the edge rusher list. Top 13s by Floster Damas. Jeremy Green, we'll take a break and we'll come back. We'll get the uh, the rest of the for the 20. 20- 24 next. I'm Sir Stroke Risk from. You're clear. Regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over that was a three year study, Eloquist That's skips like five tab. words. Reduce stroke risk better than warfarin. And over 97. 97- Really? Experience a stroke. A first, first time stroke that's done in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eloquist patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eloquist without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eloquist can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eloquist if you have an artificial heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eloquist increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical... I say we should probably skip weird and crimes to get these uh, top fives in here, or we're going to run out of time. RIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at eloquist.com or call one 8 we got 22 of them to hit and two shows left. From an ex-employee or from a former client, maybe an outdated news article or sensitive personal information about your family, search engines don't always get it right. For right or wrong, it's your reputation on the line. That's where Reputation Defender by Norton comes in. One of the most trusted names in online reputation repair, Reputation Defender has been fixing people's search results for over 15 years. Their cutting-edge approaches help you to wipe away unwanted information in your search results. They also promote the good stuff so that it rises to the top, helping you put your best foot forward. Your good name is too valuable to leave to the whims of a Google algorithm. Take control with Reputation Defender. You can start by getting your free Reputation Report card at reputationdefender.com or call 800-803-5505 to speak to an expert. That's 800-803-5505. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or clarissasellswnc at gmail.com. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Say that again, I saw you talking, but I I wasn't. Premium care with a Southern hospitality touch. Did you know Ingle? Oh, no, I was just mouthing stuff. Time cuts of meat, maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. The Sportsocracy. Why are you smiling? Because I love football. And we are counting down the days until the 2024 NFL Draft. It is right around the corner. We're less than a week away Thursday night at 8 o'clock, and we will have your live coverage from Radio Row in Marcius Park, Detroit, Michigan. Next week, we're leaving on a jet plane Tuesday afternoon. And we will be there for uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Live shows from Radio Row. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And uh, today we're testing out some of the equipment here. Uh, Jeremy uh, broadcasting from the Mullet Cave. I'm a big fan of calling it the Mullet Cave. There he is. There he is. I'm a huge fan of calling it the Mullet Cave. I'm, I'm totally down with calling it that forever. We need an artist to get me a bat symbol that's just a mullet. Yes. It's uh, instead of the bat symbol, 
it is the silhouette of a beer helmet, and it's got a mullet flowing out of the bottom of That's, it. That's uh, I'm totally good with that. I do that. I'll rock it. <laughs> we'll get you a fat head to put on the back of that wall right there. You can broadcast uh, yeah, we, live from the mullet cave. We definitely do need something on this wall directly behind me. There's a green screen on the other side. It's just that's kind of taxing on the stream, but we do need like a shelf yeah. or something behind me. It does it look does. like I should be holding up today's newspaper to show you proof of life. <laughs> you guys should have seen what it looked like uh, when he had a different shirt on and no hat. And the hair was going crazy. He did kind of look like a, you know, certain dictator after he got pulled out of a hole in the ground in Iraq. <laughs> I did, it I, was I hostage did, video level stuff. I did not like that comparison when you made it when people couldn't hear it. And I didn't <laughs> I really like it when like you made it, it when people can hear it. <laughs> you did, though. I mean, you had like Gary Busey hair going on. It was it was all kinds of special. Top 13 edge rushers for the 2024 NFL draft class at ESPN draft nerd, Jeremy Green. You can follow him on the Twitter machine. Uh, he has given us Jared verse as the number one pass rusher in this class or edge rusher in the class. Leatu Latu two, Dallas Turner, the one that's going to go first, more than likely he's at three chop Robinson at four. And then Chris Braswell Turner's teammate at Alabama comes in at number five. Number six on this list is Braylon Trice. What do you like about him? Well, it's been harder over the course of the process because the more you watch him, I feel like the less you like him. And it's not because it's not because he's not a good player. It's because you just don't see the wow with him as often. And then you start looking at the body build, and he's got super small hands, and he's got super short arms. And the build's not there, but the motor is. So I, I don't think he's going to go as high as people think he will, but I do believe he will be a really, really good value. I mean, look, I think there's a great possibility that Bra Braylon Trice doesn't go in the first two rounds because the measurables are shockingly bad. But then you watch the tape and the motor is there, and it's consistent. There's just – there's not really a play you, you can – Put your thumb on and go, that right there is what he's going to do in the NFL. No, he's just going to lather up and put his helmet on and, and get in your face and get after you over and over and over again. And every once in a while, he's going to get home to a quarterback. He reminds me a little bit of Joe Tryon Choyinka, which you know Are I you was just doing that because they wear purple uniforms I, in I, college. I, no, no, <laughs> I'm not. They both went to Washington. I get it. I hate comparing guys that went to the same school, but that one does kind of make sense. He do, he he does have all of the the raw tools that you would want, as far as I can tell. He looks like he's got good speed. He you know he's he he's he's able to get guy like if if there's a guy in reach, I think he's bringing you down. Right, I, I feel pretty confident that he's got he's got a good grip to be able to get a hold of somebody uh, when they're close. Would you stop that? You're not even in the studio, and I could hear you snickering. I didn't do anything. What? <laughs> We're talking football here. I didn't do anything. Get back on the horse. Uh huh. I didn't do anything. You stopped dead there because you thought you could heard, hear me snickering, which you did. You don't hear that well, and there's no way you heard that. <laughs> Damn, this microphone is good. It is good. It's too good. I can't do anything <laughs> under my breath. I have to mute it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, I, I mean, the big, uh, the biggest problem translating to the next level for him is is what? I think it is the measurables. I'm I'm afraid that mm -hmm. with with arms that short and and all of the the physical deficiencies he has, it's going to be tough for him to do what he did in college. Don't forget the grip. He's got great grip. Uh, it is uh, time for number seven. seven. Uh, Adisa Isaac out of Penn State. Look, he's not as good as Chop, 
but he might be more balanced than Chop. I I I think there's still a lot to get out of him as a pass rusher, but he is more super high motor, three down guy. I don't know why, but Adisa Isaac strikes me as a guy that ends up in like Atlanta. I don't think it will be that one because I do believe they're going to take Dallas Turner, although taking Quinion Mitchell and then taking Adisa Isaac, you could do much worse. I, I like the kid. I just it, we're getting now into the more I'm super projecting. He's versatile in that he can line up many different ways. I'm just not sure he's elited anything. He's not one that I'm very familiar with. He hasn't been crazy popular through the process, but a lot of scouts like him. And because he is one of those that you dig into the tape and you just go, man, there is never a time that you don't know where he is and what he's doing. It's just a, a, kind of like I said about Braylon Trice. There's not a lot of, wow. There's a lot of, hey, eh, it's just it's pretty solid. And it gets hard to take those guys in the second round. Mm-hmm. All right, Adisa Isaac at number seven, number eight. Uh, this is where you get Darius Robinson for me. If you take away a handful of games in this past season, I would have had him in late six, seven undrafted free agent territory. And you look at his body type, he is gigantic to be an edge. I mean, he's 6'5", 285. And then you saw him run, and you get into that, and you just go, look, the kid can't play defensive tackle because he did that at Missouri, and that was the worst tape we had on him. Then he plays out on the outside. He's too slow to be an, to be a legit edge in the NFL. I think he's a 3-4-D end, and I believe that's why Detroit likes him so much is because that's where they would play him, inside mm -hmm. of, of Aiden Hutchinson. And then that becomes really scary to deal with on one side. It's not that I don't like the kid. It's just there's eight teams in the NFL he actually fits with, which makes me think, talking about him in the first round, I'm not, are you sure? Because I'm not so sure. No. Number nine. This is a guy that he does one thing real real well, and that's that he is an absolute bull rush terror. Uh, Marshawn Neeland out of Western Michigan. He has one trick, and that trick is a good trick. I just don't know that he has any others is that he's big. He's physical. He can get into your body. He can set the edge against the run. Uh, and, and he is going to, I think he will be able to power his way to sacks in the NFL. There's just no finesse whatsoever. And he's not athletic enough. I know what he ran at the combine that made me feel better about taking him in day two. I feel like people have gotten to the point where it made them feel better about taking him in the first round. And to me, that's all right. We've, we've gone, we've gone a little, a little kooky here. First round for him does not make a ton of sense to me. I mean, cause that means you think he's close to chop Robinson or he's close to lay to lot And he's just not uh, to me. I I'm in like with him. I'm not in love with him. All right. Give us number 10. This is one that I think I'm higher on than the vast majority of people. It's Gabriel Murphy uh, out of UCLA. He is a special pass rusher, and I think there's more to get out of him. He's just so raw. I love him as a third-round pick, and I if your Bucks were to, were to not take Chop Robinson at 26, I don't see a way that you don't take Gabriel Murphy in the third round. Uh, he played okay. one year at UCLA, started at North Texas. He obliterated people uh, at North Texas. He was good at UCLA. He was just overshadowed by, by Leatu Latu. Okay, number 11. Uh, Austin Booker, uh, edge out of Kansas. He's another one that I think there's more there, but he's so unbelievably raw. I w I'm not going to say I would put him totally in mothballs, but it's pretty close. If he plays in, if he plays more than 200 snaps his rookie year, I think you're doing it wrong, which to me tells me he's not a first or second round pick. But right, two if more you're to willing get, to get two, the, the, the most out of him, you could be really happy with it two years from now. Mm -hmm. Two more to go in the top 13, number 12. Muhammad Kamara. Uh, I was this, wondering if he was going to make the top 13. No doubt. Three, four outside linebacker. 
I think he is – he has Denver Bronco written all over him to stand up in that defense and, and, and really be that – he is undersized. He's short and he's thin, but he won so consistently. If you go back and watch the Colorado tape, he looked like a man amongst boys. I mean, I guarantee you Dion was sitting there going, man, we should have thrown more money at him. <laughs> that, you know what? That's the kind of player was, I want. Muhammad Kamara is the kind of player that Deion Sanders swears is attracted to Colorado. Unfortunately, they're not. They're not. It's not. It's not really great offensive line talent to put him up against, though. Either to say, "Hey, he can do things." Yeah, Colorado had a terrible offensive line, though. He I'm not saying he can't do it. Than him. <laughs> Yeah, not saying he can't do it. Just saying, I don't know that I would necessarily use that as the gold standard. He beat Colorado as not, you know, a lot of people beat Colorado this past year. Uh, and then number 13. Can I pick three guys because I want to? Oh, wait a minute. My name's on the door. I can do whatever I want to. Uh, <laughs> Javon Solomon, Xavier Thomas, Jalex Jale Hunt. I love all three of them, but I don't think you can take them before the third day. They're okay. all really raw, but they all three have have burst plays that you go, that kid could be special. Mm -hmm. When we do the the game that we often do, or that we've done every year we've covered the draft, where I get the 13th pick in the draft, I will bet you anything you want. My fourth round pick is one of the three guys I just said. And I like them. I, I don't want to choose between my children, so I'm not choosing between them. <laughs> <laughs> Put them all three at 13. All right, so tied at 13th, Javon Solomon, Xavier Thomas, and Jalex Hunt. Uh, and I got to give uh, DNA Tooth Podcast, he did say Xavier Thomas about 543 times. Uh, and who that dude and me was talking about Jalex Hunt. Mm -hmm. Those two are just the, the raw athleticism of them. And look, I'm not a, a, a shorts Look how fast he is in shorts kind of guy. Look how athletic he is in shorts kind of guy. Those three will absolutely blow your mind athletically. Mm -hmm. You're in the sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville, the top 13, or I guess top 15 edge rushers in the 2024 NFL draft class. In the next hour, we will give you another top 13. We'll do the defensive tackles in this class uh, coming up after the break. We'll get into uh, some of these top fives, top five draft picks for every NFL franchise in the last 40 years. Another batch on the way. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on You're clear. Asheville. Temple. Temple. Rolling into our Friday afternoon and some showers, thunder showers around. Nothing too widespread, but some of the stronger storms may produce some gusty winds and small hail. There's a small risk of a tornado, upper 70s tonight. The chance of showers and thunderstorms continues mainly early, 55. A cooler Saturday, some fog early, then partly sunny and breezy, upper 60s. Then on Sunday, more rain possible, with a high in the mid-50s. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Wendy's. Try Wendy's new Cinnabon Pull-Apart. Wendy's new Cinnabon Pull-Apart is here to satisfy morning cravings with its warm, sweet cinnamon sugar roll dough, ooey-gooey texture, and signature cream cheese frosting. Get the best part in every bite this morning with Wendy's new Cinnabon Pull-Apart, only at participating U.S. Wendy's. To tell you that Keno picks 20 winning numbers, we wrote a winning number of our own. Hit it, boys. You pick up to 10. Keno picks 20. It's easy to play for a whole lot of money. Hey! Winning numbers are... Is Stephen Tao even in today? Cation Lotto. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds to win prize range from 1 in 3.86. Probably. I haven't seen his name. 185543. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. Regenerative medicine. If you are tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. Surgery, steroids, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. We're talking natural biologics using your body's own power to repair and restore damaged tissue. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup. 
Dr. Shinecup is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, tons of research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Kinetics now to learn more about some exciting options. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Phone 828-333-9517 in Asheville and in Greenville. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high quality screen printing embroidery and laser engraving right here in Asheville. free personal delivery within buncombe county and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in western north carolina visit showtimesportsavl.com and mountaingraphicsavl.com your one-stop custom apparel shops at ingles whether we're celebrating friday night rivals televising college basketball games bringing the fan you there pro soccer or taking you out to the ball yes, game at your minor league park it's all in the all right ingles Low prices, love the savings. If you're looking to buy, sell, no weird. We're just going straight into Paul. The agent I'm following your lead. Sells WNC brokered by EXP Realty. Check I'm us out online. Since I just this didn't works. want you to hit I'm the rejoiner. And did I mention that Clarissa Same sells more. WNC loves teachers? Since this we works, love teachers it means so much. We're giving back 25 percent months. of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today. Right. 828-774-6343. Or Clarissa sells WNC at gmail.com. The Sportocracy. These guys are a fing disgrace. It is ESPN Asheville. This is the Sportsocracy, and uh, it's time to jump in to another round of top fives. So I got on the uh, list making jag as I do sometimes, uh, every now and then, and just uh, decided, hey, let's look back at the last forty years of NFL drafts and figure out who the best picks have been for every team in those drafts. So we continue here on the list. Um, I have not seen, seen Stephen Tao's name today. Have you in the chat? I haven't that I've noticed. Yeah, uh, I don't. I mean, I don't want to do Baltimore if he's not with us because we've been hanging on to it for him specifically. Well, I mean, he goes back. To, um, he, he goes back and listens on the podcast, which all of you I could know. do. I mean, even if you listen to it live, you <laughs> could just true. start it on the podcast to show people that you care. <laughs> just don't want to leave him out. You know, he's such a vital, uh, you know, founding member of our society here, um, and and we're all going to miss him when he moves away. Um, I'll hold, we'll hold off on Baltimore for a second here. Um, let's go with the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans last 40 years of drafts, Jeremy, <laughs> what, what comes to your mind? It's the first thing that jumps off the page at you about Tennessee. Oh, uh, the first, the first one that jumped off the page to me was Javon curse. Uh, he was the first player. Ooh, I remember them good. drafting that. I just went, my God, he is not of this world. It didn't last real long, but man, it was fun while it did. Yes, yes, it did, and he he did make the list because he was the original freak. Well, I mean, I'm glad he made your list because I would really have hated to call your list wrong. You've worked really hard on these, and if he wasn't in your top five, <laughs> I would have just gone invalid. Yes, uh, yes, no, he is in. He is on the list. The number one though pick of the Tennessee Titans. So the last forty years, you got to go all the way back to forty years. His number one name on the list is Ray Childress. Out of Texas A&M, he's the number three pick in the 1985 draft and then ended up making, I think it was 28 Pro Bowls in a row. Um, it wasn't quite that many, but he was one of the most feared defensive ends back before we called them edge rushers. Number two, Steve McNair. Number three pick at Alcorn State, 1995. I don't think they're upset about that. That would have been my one, just to be clear. Steve McNair's your one? No right. doubt, and it's not really all that close. You got to remember how untoward Why? it was at that point. I mean, because he came from an HBCU, and it, it had been a long time since a player 
of that caliber had come out of an HBCU. And there were a lot of people that said, we can't do it that high. In spite of the fact, I think he was the best player in college football at that time. He was kidding. His tape is so funny to go back and watch from college because it looks like a 27-year-old man played with a bunch of six-year-olds. Mm-hmm. Everything that we have thought HBCU football was for a long time, you get, you get one great player and they can dominate. Number three, Eddie George. 14th pick in 1996 out of Ohio State. He was my team. That was close for me. That was close for me with Derrick Henry. Oh, wow. It was four. That high on Derrick Henry, eh? Why are you not? I don't think he would have made my list. I can't tell you definitively he wouldn't have. I, could you, I mean, look, you're going to leave out some guys here that were really, really good. No, you only went five, Derrick right? Uh, I, 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 I do have a couple of honorable mentions. Okay. I'll, at the end. I, I, I'll um, hear you out. But Derrick, Derrick Henry is my four, 45th pick in uh, 2016. And then Javon Curse was my five. Now, who did I leave out of that? Keith Bullock. Okay. I would have Keith Bullock over Derrick Henry, Henry, and I wouldn't even think about it. Really? He was arguably the best linebacker in the league, not named Ray Lewis, for about eight years. I never understood why he didn't get the love that he deserved. But he did. I mean, he was off-ball linebacker. I get it. but Yep. Maybe, maybe that's why. I don't know. That was the okay, first name on the top of my list. head. Yeah, I did not have him on my list. Uh, my honorable mentions were Derek Mason. That was another one I was then, going to say. And then Chris Johnson. Oh, old, old, old CJ 4-H. Ugh. Yep. He had one great year. Made It got paid, and then... Yep. That's how it goes. God, though. I remember being you so excited when he came to the Jets, and I demolished people with that team on Madden. And they demolished my soul as I had to watch them. <laughs> it was like our Better version of the dream team. You f- Better or worse than how you felt when Le'Veon Bell did it. Oh, no, Le'Veon Bell was worse. Le'Veon Bell was markedly worse. I got so excited you when didn't they have signed m- him. You didn't have to have much hope for the Ladanian Tomlinson signing. I enjoyed Ladanian. I didn't enjoy the other two you just said. <laughs> I enjoyed Matt Forte. I did not enjoy the other two you just said. Matt Forte. I had even forgot that he played for your team. I have a Matt Forte jersey in the room I'm sitting in right now. Do you really? 100% I do. Good for you. Good for you. Um. All right. Uh, any uh, any anything else? Do you have uh, do you, do you have busts that oh, you want to talk about God, yeah. real quick before oh, we move yeah. on to the next? Oh, well, I mean, I feel like a guy that never played a snap for you, Isaiah Wilson, has to be up here, pretty high. Yes, um, he was bad. The Marcus Mariota thing that didn't work out particularly well in the same draft. Doriel Green Beckham. God, you talk about a kid that had the world by the tail and just. He would not work in a pie factory as a taster. And it killed his career. Kendall Wright is up there pretty high. Um, Trying to think if I'm missing one off the top of my head. Vince Young's up there pretty high. Those are the, those are the best ones I can think of. Yep. Um... Rob Johnson says Earl Campbell. That was before the last forty. Too long ago. Yeah, you got to go back like forty six years to get to Earl Campbell. And Corey Davis um, did go five, but he had a nice long career in the NFL, and he's actually, from the sounds of it, he's coming back next year. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't think it will be for my New York Jets, but uh, it does sound like he wants mm-hmm. to play next year. Uh, Rob had also asked if we could do the Commanders. We already did the Commanders. 
That was Tuesday's show. So you can go back and check that right. on the podcast if you would uh, if you would like to. Um, let's go Seattle Seahawks. This is one that there's a lot of names for. There's a lot of names that I had to at least write them down. Because historically, I mean, this is a pretty decent drafting franchise. And then when you factor in any team that has one of those homegrown Super Bowl era runs, you're always going to have a bunch of picks. Seattle's class in here. Seattle's funny because they were pretty easy for both of us because they had a lot of names you wanted to put on the best picks of the last 40 years. And I had five off the top of my head where I went, he sucked. Uh, LJ Collier, <laughs> yikes. How'd yikes. you get there, bruh? <laughs> Jermaine Effetti. Uh, Rashad Penny. Do you have another one? Oh, I've got more, but I'll, I'll let you do oh, the okay. good ones. I thought you were. I thought I thought you were rolling. I thought you. I was just gonna let you roll with the bad ones. Oh, the ones um, I just did were all in the last yeah. ten years. So, uh, yeah, I'll let you do the good ones, and then I'll do the all timer bust list. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Uh, again, remember this is top five picks of the last forty years. So we can't go back beyond nineteen eighty five for this. Just in case you were wondering. Um. My number one, it's Russell. You he win he won you a Super Bowl. And you and you got a hell of a steal on him at seventy five overall. Uh plus it may have launched the trade of him may have launched you into the next dynasty. <laughs> so unintended consequence of trading him is eh, didn't work out too bad. Seventy fifth pick overall in twenty twelve though. It's pretty good value for a dude who won you a Super Bowl and almost won you a second one. Number two was Bobby Wagner. He was the 47th pick of that draft in 2012. Walter Jones is at three. If he had gone any further, I was going to yell at you. No. Walter Jones should have been one. You think so? I could make the argument he's the best player in the history of the franchise. And you took him at six, which even little 10-year-old Jeremy went, what am I missing? Uh, Because I watched him play at my school, and he is real, real, real good. (laughs) You went, how did he last till six? Well, I also love Sean Springs, who they took at three in that Mm -hmm. that class. Yep. Uh, There's... No doubt about it. Number four, Cortez Kennedy. Number three in the 1990 draft. And fifth was tough because you had to cut out a lot. But it was Richard Sherman. He went 154 overall in 2011. And he's a no doubt, you know, gold jacketer. I would agree with you. All right. So did you have any problems with that top five other than the order? Uh, Yeah, Walter Jones was too low. I feel like Sean Spring's name should have at least been mentioned at some point. Uh, Other than that, not really. Okay. Oh, and then the three all-timer list uh, would be Brian Bosworth, Dan McGuire, Rick Meyerer. I'm out. (laughs) By the the way, you did that in four years. That was in yeah. four years you took all three of those bums. Yikes. Yikes. All right, top fives of the last 40 years. Tennessee Titans, Seattle Seahawks. Uh, we'll take a quick break here when we come back from the break. Uh, Jeremy, let's let's try to get your uh, picks of the night in if we can. All right, we'll, uh, we'll give it the old college try to see if I can hear my music. <laughs> we'll see if we can see if we can make that uh, all work. I've got all the buttons punched. It should be uh, ready to go. We are uh, coming to you once again. I am live from the Ingalls studio. Jeremy live from the Mullet Cave, somewhere in the uh, recesses of uh, of Mighty Woodfin, North Carolina. Uh, and we will 
be back with you right after this on ESPN Asheville. Green on green picks of the night coming up. Do you have an idea for an invention or new product? Clear. Next, inventors. InventHelp can help you get started with your idea. Call 1-800-INVENTION or go to inventhelp.com to get your free inventors information. They can help you try to patent your idea and submit it to companies. Get started with your idea today at inventhelp.com. InventHelp is the leading invention service company. With offices nationwide, they've been helping inventors since 1984. Inventors receive more than 10,000 patents through their patent referral services. Don't wait to get started with your idea. For free information, contact your friends at InventHelp. Go to InventHelp.com or call 1-800-INVENTION. That's InventHelp.com or call 1-800-INVENTION. They help everyday inventors just like you. Additional services include invention websites, prototype models, technical drawings, and more. They keep your idea confidential and explain every step of their invention services. Remember, that's InventHelp.com. InventHelp.com. Bonus bucks. No. You want to go to your next top 13 at the top of the hour or keep doing top fives? Bonus bucks right here. Keep listening Following to you. Keywords to we did top 13 website. defensive tackles at uh, Step into savings the and discount first day of the tournament. So they haven't changed oh, much, we? but we, they, we did. But th- I mean, it was a month ago. From sporty sneakers to chic sandals, we've got. Okay. So, I mean, we can do that in a segment if you want to. In style. Discount shoes. Okay. That'll give us some time to catch up your top 13. Introducing 10. Yeah, yeah. Tile flooring, a game changer in the tile industry. Say goodbye to the trade off between durability and easy installation with Tenzite's revolutionary indoor outdoor stone tile. Visit Bob wants us to do the Eagles. See how our tile is installed. Yeah. Or mortar. Instead, our innovative rubber gasket system connects the tiles together. Does that mean I need to be prepared to do the Eagles? You simply grab one. Yes. We'll do them next. 10 for at tanzai.com or after the top of the hour contour to cover any existing good. floor while insulating against sound and cold beautiful and versatile tanzai tile adapts to indoor or outdoor use from kitchens to patios on all right and i am i am using your new music so it's just gonna start and then you just roll for life Witness this new innovative music. product yourself and order us. A- yeah, yeah, yeah. Your new bed that you've been using. Oh, oh, oh. A N Z I T. Is this different from the one that we used to use? To kick off, let's look at today's three keys to premium pre gaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brew. I'll replace that in the uh, in the system. Old familiar flavors. Stand for. We don't have to record Stand those for. anymore. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from: White Haze, Peach Perfect, Scary Berries, and Bob just wants to celebrate the busts. Three at six percent ABV. Nobody Max can challenge my yellow. jets, but I do dollar. understand that. And you must <laughs> unleashed. Available at your local retailer. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Coming up next here, Dylan. That you get top quality fresh items for your family table. It's yeah, we can talk to you guys in the break on YouTube because they can't hear us on the radio. At least I hope they can. I can't see it. No, Tank swears to me they can't. Quality. Yeah, no, they cannot. It's all in the bag. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. All right, now that I can hear. So now I can give you out picks of the night. It's time for me to continue my winning ways in the NBA play-in tournament, which I may think is stupid, but I'm greatly enjoying making money on it. Tonight, you get the Miami Heat with no Jimmy Butler against the Chicago Bulls, and Chicago is a very Vogue pick, which is really, really stupid because Miami, even without Jimmy Butler, is good defensively, and the Bulls fold like an old deck chair against anybody that's any good defensively. I don't care that Jimmy Butler's not playing. They're going to get boat raced in the first round of the playoffs. But they're going to win tonight, and I'll go over the 208 and a half. In the other game, in the Western Conference, you get the Sacramento Kings against the New Orleans Pelicans. No Zion Williamson. That's the biggest takeaway for me. And look, there's no doubt in my mind. I know Tank is very dismissive of Zion and doesn't think he's as good as many of the rest of us do. But... Zion's still a really good player, and without him, I don't think they have a snowball's chance in Atlanta winning this game because they are hyper 
inefficient when they don't have him to finish offensive sets. So I will take the Sacramento Kings to win this game. I'm not messing with points because I don't like this spread. It moved too much. But give me the Sacramento t- Kings. The 82-game preseason is in the books. It's finally time for the real season, including those picks in the play-in tournament. From that all the way to the finals, you can play same-game parlays, live bet, odds boost, all kinds of things with the NBA, and you can do it with DraftKings Sportsbook. And if you're new to the whole sports betting thing, you can do it the way I just said and just go money line to take a team to win outright. And here's something to sweeten the deal. You bet $5 using our code WPEK, and you get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only, new customers only. Subject to regulatory licensing requirements, bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit, wagering, and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner. Clear. In Asheville. I used the wrong website. And some showers, thunder showers around. Nothing too widespread, but some of the stronger storms may produce some gusty winds and small hail. There's a small risk of a tornado. Upper I realized it halfway through the, the website read. That's not the right one. <laughs> For Saturday, <laughs> sunny and breezy. Upper 60s. Then on Sunday, more rain possible. From the high in the mid 50s. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Wendy's. Try Wendy's new Cinnabon Pull Apart. Wendy's new Cinnabon Pull Apart is here to satisfy morning cravings with its warm, sweet cinnamon sugar rolled dough, ooey gooey texture, and signature cream cheese frosting. Get the Tank, best I love you dearly, but I may never leave my house again. Wendy's new Cinnabon Pull Apart. Only at Partic- Are you having too much fun? Life came with a warning. Well, I've done two hours of radio in my underoos, so I feel like this <laughs> well, is how I should do know, it moving we forward. We didn't. We didn't need that. The one minute test today at doihadprediabetes.org. <laughs> Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre diabetes awareness partners. From the Ingalls Studios. Could have just said, I'm feeling real relaxed over here. I am feeling real <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> and a breeze. Oh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Waynesville. Mr. Ball's out over there. I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation. In a re- Why don't you put your balls away? Problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduced stroke risk better than warfarin. And over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. The funniest risk. part Eliquis of this whole hot mics in the break thing is, is how bleeding. many don't people don't Eliquis realize it's coming heart valve. until it happens and then they think we're immediately <laughs> right. fired. While taking... <laughs> yes, yes. What are they doing? A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of I have no clots, control over the radio, so the they can't to hear move. me. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental. All right, here comes, uh, here comes the cue to call. Five Eliquis. Now, your chance to win $1,000. Just enter this nationwide keyword on our website. Happy. That's happy. Enter it now. Log on now to ESPNAVL.com. The Sportsocracy. It fires me up, man. I love it. Say it one more time. The Sportsocracy. Shake it back! Your city's best sports talk. It is gross. Just earlier. They are mature, actually. You just have to... Get to know them better. Your lunchtime dose of dumbassery. Live from the Ingalls studio. It is ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, 1400. The Sportocracy heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Seen everywhere on YouTube. Go to thesportocracy.com. Click the live video link. Subscribe to the channel once you're through to YouTube. And that way you can join us in the chat each and every day uh you weigh in on uh, all of the top fives the top 13s all of the uh the, the the rankings that are done here in the sportsocracy it gets i know it gets quite ridiculous sometimes but you know what we're we're list guys we're ranker guys and you, we like it you can also join us for the hot mic dumbassery that happens uh, on youtube because we figured out you can't hear us on the radio so we can say whatever we want to say Yes, yes. Uh, Jeremy uh, broadcasting live today from the Mullet Cave, as we have now d- deemed it. And um, I'm going to get a sign that says, Welcome to the Mullet Cave. I hope you understand that. 
Yes, uh, Hubert Queen in the YouTube comments says that Jeremy had to stay home so that he can take the day drinking of uh, domestic lights to new heights. So you're doing some day drinking today, are you? Is I what, am not. Is that what's going on? I, I am not. I have my, uh, <laughs> uh, for one more hour, I have my, my Pepsi Cola in my very large oversized McDonald's cup. And no, I don't yes. eat McDonald's every day. I like their cups, so I wash them and I keep them. Interesting. It's like your grandma that keeps all the Cool Whip tubs for, you know. Where do you think I got the idea, Tank? (laughs) I was the guy you don't send the nice Tupperware home with because it ain't coming back. Right. That's why you'll never get a Tupperware container from my house that matches. You send him home with that uh, with that cheapo one that you got with the lunch meat that you bought last week. The country crock. I have a, a whole selection of country crock butter bowls. All because you can't be trusted with dishes. I get it. Well, I've I mean, seen look, the back seat of your car. Look, Mullet Senior and uh, uh, Mama Mullet decided that ah, I'm tired of buying Tupperware because he steals all of it. <laughs> Matthew Hoffman says, and you say tanks cheap. It's not cheap, okay? It's lazy. There's a big difference. I mean, look, I, tank is I mean, cheap. I am old, lazy. How old is this water bottle that I've been carrying around? Well, uh, it's it's not it's even clear least, anymore. So no, it's it's been through some stuff. This this water bottle has been through a lot. Tank, now that you've so. put that up on the camera and I could see it, I I have to ask a question. Is there a hole in that water bottle of some kind? Because it looks a little smoky. Looks no, like no. maybe you used it in place of an <laughs> apple at some point. Else. <laughs> does it have a slide in it of any kind? It does not. It is not. Are you sure? It's a completely functional whole water bottle. It's just, it's so refillable and portable. I just take it with me everywhere. And uh, yeah, it has... It has seen better days, but, you know, that's what happens. Uh, all right. We will continue here with uh, top fives. Last 40 years, the top five draft picks for each and every franchise. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles have been requested by Bob Brown and uh, as another valued member of the House of Reprehensibles, we will uh, fulfill that request. The Philadelphia Eagles' best draft pick of all time to you, Jeremy, is who? Best one of all time? Well, the last 40 years of what, what, the, the, the whole process here. Just curious where your mind's at before I get into my list. I was ready with bad ones, but... And the first one that came to my mind was Donovan McNabb. But yep. it was largely because of how much hate they got for that at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, well, you 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 are correct. That is my number one. Uh, my number one is Donovan McNabb with the number two pick in the 1999 draft. One, be, partially because of what you just said. He was booed so mercilessly and never really, I mean, he really wasn't given the shot, at least not out of the gate, to be the guy who could be the guy and and then we quickly found out oh this this cat's different this this guy's special and you know he had them as a threat in the nfc what they made four straight championship games only made it to one super bowl but they made four straight nfc championship games during the late 1990s or the early 2000s excuse me and Hard to ar- hard to argue that he wasn't the best of all time, in my opinion. He's also a great guy in retirement too. He does a lot for high school kids. Uh, a lot of it very close to us. Yes, uh, number two selection for me, Jason Kelsey. You got a perennial All Pro, possibly one of the best to ever play the game. With the 191st pick of the 2011 draft. That's value. That, that feels pretty good. <laughs> like almost none other. So he was number two. It was the draft pick value that swung that one for me. I wanted to have Brian Dawkins higher, but he comes in at three. 
He was the 61st pick in the 1996 draft. Uh, the people asking about Reggie White, he missed it by a year. Yes. He would have been the 41st year. Yes. Yes, he just barely missed this. Uh, and if you're still around when we do Buffalo later, Jim Kelly was 1984 as well, so he didn't make the list for Buffalo. Um, We've already done Buffalo. That st- uh, d- did we? Okay. I was just saying that those were the two that stuck out to me in this process of one more year, and they they would have been on the list and number one on the list. Um, Fletcher Cox was my four, 12th pick in 2012. And then Lane Johnson, number four pick in 2013, was number five. Uh, you did leave out Chris Carter, though. I mean, if we're just talking well, about the player, he didn't do it in Philadelphia, but. Yes. I See, see I put like, I have like a couple of um, honorable mentions, but then I also have like little asterisks on my list of, of guys that you drafted that weren't really famous because what they did for you. <laughs> Chris Carter was on that list. Okay. Mark Kelso was also on that list. You never say Jerome Brown either, which is surprising to me. No, I did not say Jerome Brown. Uh, Randall Cunningham was also uh, on the honorable mentions. LaShawn he was McCoy. on the honorable mention list? Yeah. Brian Westbrook. Wow. What? Randall Cunningham should have been in the top five. <laughs> Just straight really? up. Really? No doubt. I'm not going to lie. I think I spaced out for a minute, and I thought you said him. I don't think he's better than any of those dudes I have in the top five. Better than Lane Johnson and Fletcher Cox? I I want to say yes. I do want to say yes. But you can't when you when you think about it. You really you really can't. I mean, I liked Randall too, and he was a one of a kind game changer back in the day. But I could not have him in the top five. That's that's not, that's part of the reason I have all these honor, honorable mentions. You know me, Mister Participation Trophy Trophy Spencer, as you used to call me. Uh, Hubert Queen has a good point that Reggie was drafted in '84 and it's 2024. That is true, but that would have been the 41st draft because exactly. this year counts because we're right here at it even though no yes. picks have been made yet yes that was how the we rationaled 40. it and it might have been after tank made that bottle so cloudy because i do understand how convoluted that logic is <laughs> just that's why we did it that way yeah no it's 19 1985 draft is it was the was the cut line here um all right uh busts oh mike mamula is number one with a bullet that was the definition of, hey, maybe you shouldn't put so much into the combine. Because, yes, he is a freak of nature athletically. The only problem is he can't do that one thing. What is it? Play football. He really is not very good at that. So, uh, Fred X, Freddie Mitchell, he's a, another one that I would have had up there pretty high. Uh, Jerome McDougal. <sighs> Those are the biggest ones that, that I had on my list. Jerome McDougal. Danny Watkins. Oh, God, do you remember that? They made such a big deal about him, and he absolutely was horrifically bad. I do not remember him. He was the kid that went to Baylor. I, I, wanted, I can't remember what his story was. They like brought him up on stage, of which he did not deserve to be in the green room at the draft, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, Marcus Smith, there's another one. How did anybody fall for Marcus Smith? (sighs) Sorry. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Houston Texans. C.J. Stroud. Too early? C.J. Stroud. He is on the list. (laughs) (laughs) I was kidding. Oh, he was a fireman. Uh, That's what it was. I I had that in my head, but I thought maybe I'd made it up. Bob Brown said... uh, uh, Danny Watkins was a fireman and he had like paid his way through college as a fireman. And he probably then became a fireman again about two years later when everybody realized he can't play football. He can't. Great story. Bad player. Yes. Yes. Uh, the Houston Texans top five draft picks the last 40 years. Number one, JJ Watt. 
No argument from me so far. Okay. All right. And no qualms there. Number two, Andre Johnson. Number three pick out of Miami in 2003. See previous. He was the first of the all-time greats. Um, Number three, I went to Sean Watson. I would already take 2017. I would already take CJ Stroud over to Sean Watson. Really? Um, You can't do that in one year. What was the scandal that shut down my franchise for two years that CJ Stroud had? Oh, wait, that's (laughs) right. I didn't have one. (laughs) Lawyered. Yeah. uh, I I, look, I understand it. You just, you hope that this is going to be better. CJ Stroud is definitely you know, off to a great start. But if this flames out, the Deshaun Watson era is still the best era that you've had. I wouldn't even have Deshaun Watson in my top five. Really? Nope. It ended too badly, and it didn't last long enough. I I mean, this is the O.J. Simpson role. It did end badly. Sure it did, but you did end up putting yourself in a position to bounce back, which they've done. This is the O.J. Simpson rule. Okay, like you got to do a lot of good for me to still put you on these lists when you do, you know, that that thing you did or maybe didn't do, but there were 514 people that said you did, which makes me think you probably did. Right. Uh, DeAndre Hawkins was my four. And 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 then five, I, I want to do that thing where I just take a class again. And it's the 2023 class. C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson, Tank Dell. Yeah, I can't, first I year can't fault you for so any good. of that. The first year has been so good that, that all of them belong to be mentioned, at least. So the 2023 class is at number five altogether. And then Dwayne Brown is my last, like, honorable mention. I get it. I'm still I'm okay. still shocked at the Sean Watson thing. But, I, I mean, I understand why you said it. You also didn't say Brian Cushing, which I'm a little shocked by. He was, he was one of those that was just on the outside. He was a little inflated, but. Yes. Um. Got to give him props for one of one of the great UDFAs, though, in Arian Foster. Yeah, I mean that just didn't last long. No, but you find a guy who can, you know, who sets the league on fire for a couple of years. That's that's worth a mention. The fact that you didn't even spend a draft pick on that guy. You're not wrong. Uh, their bust, I feel like, has to start with David Carr. If it starts with anybody else, you've done it wrong. And even though I don't think any of it was his fault, and if he had gone anywhere else, I think it would have been fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, he literally created a syndrome of if we hit somebody this often, they're not going to be good at football. Uh, Amobi Okoye, he belongs on this list. God, I, I got so duped I by him. Too. He was like 12 years old coming into the – wasn't he like 19 when he got drafted? Yeah. Yeah, he was 19. He was like a, a an early junior or something. Like went to went to college a year early cuz he was so damn smart. And then he went to Houston yeah. and got traded like a 19-year-old kid that went into a bar. He got thrown around like it was Roadhouse. <laughs> yes. Those were the two biggest names on my bus list. Okay. All right, uh, that is the Houston Texans. We'll take a break. When we come back from the break, it was requested, so we will do it for Kelvin Joyner, the Las Vegas Raiders, coming up next here in the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. Do you have an idea for an invention or new product and don't know what to do next? Clear. VentHelp can help you get started with your idea. Call 1-800-INVENTION or go to inventhelp.com to get your free inventor's information. They can help you try to patent your idea and submit it to companies. Get started with your idea today at inventhelp.com. InventHelp is the leading invention service company. With offices nationwide, they've been helping inventors since 1984. Inventors receive more than 10,000 patents through their patent referral services. Don't wait to get started with your idea. For free information, contact your friends at InventHelp. Go to inventhelp.com or call 1-800-INVENTION. That's inventhelp.com 
or call 1-800-INVENTION. They help everyday inventors just like you. Additional services include invention websites, prototype models, technical drawings, and more. They keep your idea confidential and explain every step of their invention services. Remember, that's inventhelp.com. Inventhelp.com. People are talking about Summit Dental in Asheville. Just check out their Google reviews. One By request, we'll do the uh, Cardinals after the Raiders. Okay. The roof, and I'm always so nervous. Uh, apparently, my desk is here three days early, so exactly I have to go sign for it outside. I'll be right the back. Staff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why does Amazon the tell you a day that something's going to show up if it's just going to show up two days from now? My teeth it'll be there Monday, to or spot. it'll be there two days from now. About Thanks, Bezos. I'm not complaining. Thursday, May 2nd, Orange Peel Events presents Portugal the Man at Rabbit Rabbit. Could keep my hands on myself Take out dust and more, put them back up on the shelf Kiss my little baby Get your tickets me. now online at theorangepeel.net Don't miss Portugal, the man, live May 2nd at Rabbit Rabbit. The key to any successful business is maximizing your reach. That's where the power of radio can help you get more customers in your doors and telling all of their friends about our friends. Hello, friends. Get your message to the masses through ESPN Asheville, the Sportsocracy, and iHeartMedia Asheville. Learn how all of our great partners like Ingalls Markets, DraftKings Sportsbook, and Monster... Wait, did we do Jacksonville? ...to continue to build their businesses. No. Just email me. Tank I didn't think so. Com. We're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with Beast Unleashed. I think my wife ordered Monster the heaviest Brewer. desk Number in the one, history of beat desks. The heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine. That doesn't surprise me. How long, how many option. pieces There's do I get together before I call my dad and go, I don't know what I'm doing. Personal favorite, meme green. And up. Oh, do you do that often? Tech. I did it with a bed a week ago. And you must be... <laughs> Available at your local retailer. If you're you get to step 37 and give up. You need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC brokered by EXP Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774 6343 or at gmail.com. The Sportsocracy. That is some good, clean family fun there, eh, God? And we are in the Sportsocracy live in the Ingalls studio on ESPN Asheville. Top five picks of the last 40 years running our way through. Each and every NFL team, uh, if you have a team that you want us to do, go ahead and throw it in the chat. We've got so many requests. We're just we're just throwing them. It's the all uh, live request top fives here. I feel like Carson Daly for a second. Um, except my, I don't paint my nails, though. I'm not into the Caleb Williams thing. Um, top five picks of the last 40 years. Kelvin Joyner wanted the Las Vegas Raiders, Jeremy. So I feel like we have to. Uh, are you back, by the way? I, I am. Your bed signed for. I it was a right. desk, not a bed. Oh, the desk. Excuse me. And now the question is, how many steps do I get through before I call my father and go, um, I'm going to need a hand because <laughs> I don't put things together so good. <laughs> um, well, you know, if you'd stop drinking while you're doing it, maybe that'll help. It's a lot more fun if I just drink well, while he does it. This is very true, uh, but you got to watch how much you drink when you're trying to put things together. Because I I ruined Christmas one time doing that. Um, actually, I didn't I, ruin. I was about Christmas to say. I, I feel like we need to hear this story. <laughs> I got so every every New Year's or excuse me every Christmas Eve, uh, some friends of ours have a little get together at their house, and we so we always go over there, and you know we'll. We'll do all of our imbibing and all of that. And then after we do the imbibing, we go back home and and would do all of the all of the things for the next day, right? Christmas morning. I got things to do, got things to put together. So when the boys were like, I wanna say they were three, 
four, something like that. We got them tricycles. And maybe they weren't even that big. Or, or maybe the kids weren't even that old at that point. I don't remember. Anyway, I got to put together these two tricycles, and I am about 18 sheets just <laughs> gone, obliterated. And I'm putting these things together, like watching Christmas movies, and I'm drunkenly like just hammering on these things, putting them together. And I got to one point, and I think I'd already put one of them together. The second one that I got to... I got almost done with it, and one of the pieces was on, like, backwards or something. And my drunk ass just went complete, I've ruined Christmas! They're going to be talking about this in therapy one day! Yeah, it went sideways real quick. You've seen me get that drunk before, Jeremy. (laughs) Yes, I have. Happens actually every time you go out with me. (laughs) <laughs> that story was not nearly as funny as i thought it was gonna be yeah it was i did i did not handle the disappointment well of not being able to put together a tricycle drunk on christmas eve see in my head you drank too many whiskey sours and you made your son's bicycle into a picasso <laughs> where the wheels were on the handlebars <laughs> that, that was where my brain went of, right. it's a new kind of bike you ride it upside <laughs> down I, uh, I, I did. I was able to correct the mistake. Uh, smarter people, more or less inebriated people came in to, uh, in to help, and it was all sorted out. But, yeah, I thought I had ruined Christmas there for a minute because I'm so drunk I can't put together a, a tricycle. Andy Sawmiller said if my dad listens to uh, this show, he already knows I'm calling. If my father is actively listening to this show, I guarantee you he's already on his tru- in his truck yes. on his way here. On his way. Because he's Just like, I know the call's it, coming. I might as well do it before <laughs> I open the wine. Or- exactly. <laughs> I love your dad. He's so handy, too. Oh, yeah, he can uh, fix anything. <laughs> it's, it's both maddening and so, so handy at the same time. Yes, yes. All right, let's get into the Las Vegas Raiders. Greatest draft picks of the last 40 years. The top five begins, for me, Jeremy, number one, back to 1988, the number six overall pick. One of the greatest, most underrated wide receivers of all time. Tim Brown's number one to me. You're getting no argument out of me so far. Number two, Charles Woodson. He was the fourth overall pick in 1998 out of Michigan. You would have got no argument out of me if he had been at one. Number three, I went Khalil Mack. I'll let Fifth you know when I Buffalo disagree. In 2014. Number four, Leroy Glover. 1996, he was the 166th pick overall. Great value, all pro player. Comes in at number four. And then number five, Selfish pick here. It's Bo Jackson. You went, he went 183 in the 87 draft, basically because he had convinced everybody that he wasn't going to play football anymore. The Raiders took him anyway. And while it didn't last long, he's still just one of those that you can't deny the, the impact and the buzz and everything with Bo. He was a great player. He just didn't. It didn't last real long. It didn't last. It didn't last long. And then my uh, honorable mentions were Derek Carr, Amari Cooper, and Shane Leckler. Should I add Sebastian Janikowski on that list? Oh, I forgot about Seabass. I mean, we, we universally just panned that when they did it. And then he was he was fantastic for a long, long time. Yes. How did I miss him? Well, I mean, the bust has to start with Jamarcus Russell. Yes. He's the only one. The only player in the history of the NFL that when he took the Wonder League, he got drool on it. Uh, but then there's a lot of good second choices, too. Daryl Russell is way up there. Um. Then you get into the Al Davis, I took the fastest player in the league, the Darius Hayward Bay, Mm -hmm. the uh, Robert Gallery. 
Which Gallery was actually not a bad player. He just wasn't a tackle. There's another one that I'm forgetting, and I I can't for the life of me remember who it was. Well, the Raiders were another one where you, there hasn't been a great one. I, I mean, there there haven't been a lot of great ones. In terms of picks? In terms of picks, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they tended to have good picks in the same draft. Like Khalil Mack and Derek Carr were in the same class. They also got Gabe Jackson in that class. Mm -hmm. Terrell Pryor, that's another one. That, how in the world did you fall for that? Because <laughs> he was fast. Who was the kid? I, I, I can't remember the kid's name. Um, the offensive lineman out of Maryland that weighed like 260. <laughs> uh, Bruce Campbell. Mm. Oh, God, I will never forget that class. So many people asked me about him. And the only thing I could say was, who is he supposed to block? So he ran a four seven nine forty. That's awesome. It, if he was running routes, but he's not. He's trying to block people. So I don't mm -hmm. really care how fast he was. Yep. Uh, Damon uh, Arnett. That's another one. I was gonna say you could do that whole uh, Henry Ruggs class. You're not wrong because everybody from that class was gone in three years. Yeah, because you had Ruggs and Arnett, Lynn Bowden. He's still in the NFL, though. So is Brian Edwards. John like Simpson's team, still in the league. Amik Robertson's yep. still on the team. The mm -hmm. funny thing is their last pick is the only one still on the team. <laughs> um, all right, Alex uh, Leatherwood. That was another really bad one. Yes. God, I remember you and I doing that draft together, and I told you probably 500 times. If the Jets draft Alex Leatherwood, I am going to say the most vulgar, offensive things you have ever heard in your life because I hated him so much. I don't remember where. I think I had like a fourth-round grade on him because I just I couldn't figure out what is it about this big, fat lineman that people think is going to be so good. Mm -hmm. And now he's on his fifth team. Yes. Uh, all right, and uh, let's do one more before we uh, go to the break here, and then we'll give you top 13 defensive tackles. We'll recap that uh, after the uh, bottom of the hour here. That's one that but didn't one change much. We did, the, we did that top 13 the first day of the NCAA tournament, and it's stayed pretty similar. Uh, so we will recap that coming up after the break. But first, uh, we want to get to another one of these because Red Sea, our Arizona Cardinals fan, wants to hear the Cardinals list. So we'll we'll knock this one out here. Arizona Cardinals top five picks over the last 40 years. Larry Fitzgerald, one, you did it wrong. Larry Fitzgerald, number three in 2004 out of Pittsburgh. Number two, Patrick Peterson. Number five pick out of LSU in 2011. Then at number three, more of a value pick here, but also one of the greatest players in franchise history, Back in 1991, number 59 overall at a Southern University, Aeneas Williams. Then Buda Baker at four. Whoa. What? That's their fourth best pick. Yes. And I can't tell you you're wrong. <laughs> and then Calais Campbell came in at five. I would have had Calais Campbell ahead of Buda Baker. Okay. Buddha went number 36 in 2017. Calais Campbell, 50th overall out of Miami in 2008. Um, honorable mentions for me, Adrian Wilson from 2001. And then he was Tyron so Matthew. good. Tyron Matthew probably would have been in the top five, but it just didn't, it didn't last that long there. Yeah, too. I would have had Adrian Wilson over Buddha Baker, too. Okay. I think he might be the most underrated player in my lifetime. Adrian Wilson? Yes. That's it's not bad. He was the best he, safety he in the league for six years. Good. Yes. I mean, Ed Reed, I, I get it. Outside of the Reed Palomalu, he was right there. Mm -hmm. And in terms of grade, he was actually better than them more than once. Really? But he played on a team that you just didn't get any love. Mm-hmm. Wow. So any uh anything any qualms there? Anybody I should have had on that list? Not really, no. 
I think you, you got any I bust? think you hit the uh, – do I have any bust? Uh, every <laughs> first-round pick from 20 – for every pick from Larry Fitzgerald until about 15 minutes ago in the first round. It is shocking to look at their history in the first round. So, literally, you had Thomas Jones in 2000. From there, they went Leonard Davis, Wendell Bryant, Bryant Johnson, Calvin Pace, who he was good for the Jets, uh, didn't really do much outside of that, Antrell Roll, Matt Leinart, Levi Brown, Dominic rogers Camardi, Beanie Wells, Dan uh-huh. Williams, and you had Patrick Peterson, Michael Floyd, Jonathan Cooper, Dayon Buchanan, Robert Kimdichie, Hassan Reddick, who's been way better everywhere else than he was in Arizona, mm. Josh Rosen, and then you got into the Kyler Murray time of now. Right. That is horrific. Horrifically bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Bingston, Aaron, in the YouTube comments, asked about Anquan Bolden. He should be up there, too. That's a good point. I he was a second-round pick. Yeah, I really didn't. I mean, I thought about it, but I really didn't think he deserved to be on that list. I would Not in the top five, anyway. I don't know if I could have got him to the top five, but he should have at the very least been six. Yeah. I would have him over Buda Baker, too. You just don't like Buda Baker, do you? He's fine. You just put him on a list with, like, best picks in the last 40 years. He's been in the league 14 minutes. I mean, I get it if it's a special, special player, and he's good. I just mm-hmm. don't think he's that. Really? You don't think he's he's more impactful to that franchise than Calais Campbell was in four years? No, I, I wouldn't have put him over Calais Campbell, but I would have put him over mm-hmm. practically. I think he would have been my five. Yeah. Okay. And Quad Bolt, you 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 do on him a lot when his name comes up. And I I don't I don't like that. Who I wasn't talking about Anquan, I was talking about Buddha. Or uh, yeah, I was talking about Buddha. You'd have you don't think Buddha's impact is greater than Not Clay's than Clay's Campbell? Campbell. No, I don't. Okay. No, I don't. Buddha Baker's been on this team largely when they've been awful. Calais Campbell's one of the best defensive linemen of the last twenty years. Anquan Bolden's one of the top 10 to 15 receivers of the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Anquan he was that, in Arizona longer than I thought. He was, in, he was in Arizona quite a while. Yeah, yeah. He was there much longer than I thought. I thought he was only there for the first contract, but he got a second contract with them, too. Yep. Okay, all right. So, all right, I aired there. See, that's why we shop these things around. I can admit when I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, I should have had Calais Campbell higher on that list, so I apologize to him. Great uh, former right. Florida State wide receiver and quarterback. Who? Anquan Bolden. Oh, I I don't think I knew that. Yeah, he played quarterback at Florida State. Hmm. Interesting. He was a freak Learned of something. nature. He was one of the first Florida State players I ever really loved. Yeah. It was like Learned Charlie Ward, ever. Patrick, uh, Peter Warwick, Anquan Bolden. I mean, there were great teams, but there weren't necessarily players that I just really, really loved. Yep. All right, we'll hit a bunch more of the uh, top fives on tomorrow's program here in the Sportsocracy. Uh, it won't on, be on uh, tomorrow's. Or, excuse that's... me, on Monday's program here in the Sportsocracy. Let's say you show up tomorrow to do a show. You're going to be really disappointed when you hit that button. <laughs> There's not going to be a Jeremy on the other side. Uh, it is It is Friday. I, uh, you know, we got mixed up there for a second. Uh, we only have two more in-studio shows before the trip. In fact, we only have one on Monday, uh, now that this one's almost over. Uh, Tuesday, we'll have a mock draft for you, because Tuesday's going to be travel day. And then uh, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week, live from Detroit, the 2024 NFL Draft. Flo Stradamus' top 13 defensive tackles in this draft. We'll see how much, or if any, The list has changed since the last time we talked about the defensive tackles in this class. Coming up next, here on ESPN Asheville. Exergen Temporal Scanner Weather Forecast on ESPN. Clear. All right, rolling into our Friday afternoon. And some showers, thunder showers around. Nothing too widespread, but some of the stronger storms may produce some gusty winds and small hail. There's a small risk of a tornado, upper 70s. Tonight, the chance of showers and thunderstorms continues mainly early, 55 
A cooler Saturday, some fog early, then partly sunny and breezy, upper 60s. Then on Sunday, more rain possible, from high in the mid-50s. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by True Green. True Green is the easiest and most affordable way to get a beautiful lawn. All you have to do is water and mow. And to top it off, when you sign up for an annual plan by April 20th, you get one application free. Call or visit TrueGreen.com today. Restrictions apply. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. Regenerative medicine. If you are tired of achy joints, if you're joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. Surgery, steroids, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. We're talking natural biologics using your body's own power to repair and restore damaged tissue. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup. Dr. Sheinkup is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, tons of research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Kinetics now to learn more about some exciting options. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Phone 828-333-9517 in Asheville and in Greenville. Sandstone Health and Rehabilitation is known for compassionate care for all across its 18 North Carolina locations. Whether your loved one needs short-term rehabilitation or long-term care, our exceptional staff and comprehensive services are here to support their recovery or ongoing needs if cleanliness is next to godliness look around the car right now is that very godly look life comes at you fast but so does wnc auto detailing they have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor you don't believe me check them out on instagram all that filth and years of stains disappear wnc auto detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction and they do wax and ceramic coatings call wnc auto detailing at 455-3700 premium care with a southern hospital Touch. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop custom apparel shops. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality... You've still got to do one DraftKings too, don't you? It's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their... Yes. ...to delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community... We'll do it at the end of this segment. Ingalls. Right on. Love the savings. The Sportsocracy. You two are just dumber than a bag of hammers. And we are back in the Ingalls studio on ESPN Asheville. Well, I'm in the Ingalls studio, and Jeremy, he's he's broadcasting live from the mullet cave in Woodfin. I can't wait to get, get the logo put up there in the, uh, in the new cave. There's no doubt that's know. happening. <laughs> we just have to we have to if we only knew like a graphic artist that could put together that logo hmm. I, I think i do know one I wonder who wonder who could do that i think he's actually hanging out in this studio with me right now <laughs> i don't draw people very well though and mullets yeah. are super hard to draw yeah 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 plus uh just a like a like a batman-esque silhouette of a mullet that's gonna be tough I just I struggle to draw uh, I struggle to draw people, and I really struggle to draw fat people, and I am fat people. Every time I draw fat people, they look like pigs, and it's just it's offensive. It's not good. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yeah, it's, it's especially don't do that to yourself. Ah, uh, if I'm gonna do it to anybody, it'd be me. The mullet mansion was suggested uh, as a possible name for the for the home studio there. I, I feel like that should be when we when we actually purchase a house, that would be the name of that particular studio. Yes, the Mullet Mansion. 
Mullet Manor. Your palatial estate. It's Mullet Manor. That's the right call because it's oh Wayne Manor. <laughs> it's Wayne Manor. It's yes. Mullet Manor. That's the right call. There you go. That's let's uh, go. Top 13s. <laughs> top 13s, Jeremy, as we uh, get closer and closer to next week's NFL draft. Remember, we will be live. I know you didn't forget, Jeremy, but everybody else might not know that we're going to be live from Detroit, Michigan, to, or next week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We'll be broadcasting live from Radio Row, bringing you the uh, close-up action to the 2024 NFL Draft. And as we're counting down, we're making sure we retouch, either either touch or retouch all of these uh, top 13 lists. So the top 13, are you snickering again? No, this time I actually uh, didn't. No. <laughs> the defensive tackles list, uh, number one defensive tackle in this class, it's Byron it's Murphy. It's not really all that close. I mean, Byron Murphy's the only one that I could see going in the top 15 and not making fun of whoever did it. He is a little short, but other than that, I don't really have many knocks on him. The tape this past year was intoxicating. And I think he could go. I think he will. As I shouldn't even say it that way. He, he will go in the top 15. Um, who are you pegging him to, to land with? I had him with the Raiders before they signed Christian Wilkins. Now I keep looking at him with the Saints, just going, you know, it's either him or Talese Fawaga. I, I don't know which one it will be, but I would love both. Okay. I can see that happening. Um, number two, Johnny Newton. Byron Murphy. I, I don't know what he has done that has pushed him down. I mean, he, he got hurt at the end of the year. He hasn't been able to do the the, the, the car wash of the pre-draft cycle, but that's not enough to push him as far as he has. I mean, we were talking about this kid going in the top 20, and, and now I've seen him all the way in the back end of the second round, and that's just stupid. He should not get past the Cardinals in the beginning of the second round. Agreed. I did a mock draft the other day and ended up uh, – Red Sea, I will just say, you would have really liked the mock draft that I put together for the Arizona Cardinals the other day because uh, it had Johnny Newton on it. Uh, it had, uh, I think, a Keon Coleman in the at the back end of the first round after hey, – it was just – it was craziness, absolute craziness. But that's what you get with a lot of capital. You can add some talent like that. Johnny Newton at number two, number three. To Vondre Sweat. I, I I get it. He's a house. He's 370 pounds. He showed up at the Senior Bowl a little heavy. He also showed up at the Senior Bowl and wrecked people's souls. I mean, he mm -hmm. looked like the Undertaker. Uh, it was it was ridiculous how everybody that went up against him just went flying. Uh, he's the only zero tech I feel comfortable with totally in this class, and I think he will go in the top 50. The DUI, yes, it was a bad look that you got one right here at the most important time of your life, but it's not enough to push him down as much as people think. Yep, and he is, uh, he's a BDD, that's for sure. 6'5", 366 pounds, and is just an absolute force. I mean, he's he's the he's the kind of he's the kind of guy that can uh, put your center in your lap, no doubt. Number four, Chris Jenkins, out of Michigan. I, I feel like he almost gets forgotten in this class, and that's really stupid to me. He's not his dad, and and you you do have to know that, but. He is just a really tough, hard-nosed football player that I think comes into a four-man front, and I love him in Seattle. I absolutely love him in Seattle. I don't know exactly how it would happen, but if you wind up with him and Troy Fautano, uh, that's a very <laughs> solid start to this draft. Yes. All right, Chris Jenkins at number four. Number five. Uh, Michael Hall, Jr., I finally found out what it was about him that was pushing him down, and it was character red flag. I finally had somebody after the seven-round mock draft uh, that messaged me and said, that's what it is. I, I, it's the first that I've heard of it, which is shocking because people love to tell me about red flags on players that will push them down. So I, I'm not putting much into it. 
and I think somebody's going to get an absolute steal in him. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that pushed him. I had gotten scared on him of what exactly is it about him that has pushed him down so far. And when I found out that that's what it was, I just kind of whisked it away and put him back to where he had started. Yeah. Did you get just character issues or is this something more? I mean, there's, there's so many different categories you can put guys into with character issues. Is it just, he's tough to deal with, or is this like makes dumb decisions outside of football? It felt like dumb decisions. It didn't necessarily feel like he's a bad guy. That yeah. could be it, but I hadn't heard that. I mean, look, arrest blotter things are really hard to keep away from people like me. Even mm-hmm. if you don't get charged, it is really hard to keep that out of public knowledge. So I don't think it's anything like that. I just I think he's a young, immature kid that's probably made some bad decisions. Yeah, I, I yep. don't I, I don't put a lot more into it than that. To be really honest with you. Okay, at number six on your defensive tackles list. This is going to probably feel low because he is really the one that's moved the most. And it's not that I don't like him. It's just that he has – he's very specific scheme-wise. It's Braden Fiske out of Florida State. Mm-hmm. Uh, you put him in a four-man front with a really big defensive tackle next to him, like the Jets. I, I don't think that's where he's going to go, but that's the perfect fit to me is that he can play on the inside, be the, the the speed rusher from the inside next to somebody like Quinn and Williams. I'm just afraid he's not going to end up in a situation like that. I, I don't know exactly where it is that he does end up. I loved him in Houston for a really long time, but now I don't think he's going to make it to Houston's first pick. So I'm a little scared on where he goes because he's gone. He, he skyrocketed up boards to such a point. But I I still really really like the kid. All right, we'll take a quick break. When we come back from the break, we will wrap up the top thirteen defensive tackles in the twenty twenty four NFL draft for Flostradamus Jeremy Green. And remember, there is still money to be made out there, despite the fact that well, I mean, you may not you may not watch all of the NBA games, but now's the time to start doing so if you are so inclined or you can do like jeremy says and just wager and don't watch the 82 game preseason is in the books and now it's time for the real season and you're not going to miss out on any of the action as long as you're hooked up with DraftKings sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the nba all throughout the tournament all the way to the finals from every opening tip to every buzzer beater DraftKings sportsbook has you covered with all your favorite features same game parlays live betting odds boosts and so much more and if you're new to sports betting don't worry you can just do something simple like bet on a team to win so when you open up the app you just go to your game and you hit the money line it's that simple go to the app now and uh you can well download the app i guess i should say download the app and to sweeten the deal for you New customers who bet $5 and use our promo code will get $200 instantly in bonus bets. New customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the code WPEK. That's code WPEK and get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just five. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball terms. To tell you that Keno picks 20 winning numbers, we wrote a winning number of our own. Hit it, boys. You fit the 10. And we're clear. Keno picks 10 for- 20. It's easy to play for a whole lot of money. Winning numbers are everywhere with Keno from the North Carolina Education Lot. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds to win a prize range from 1 in 3.86 to 16.63. Problem gambling helpline 877. I'm going to shorten this break up just a little bit. Elevate your outdoor living space Tanful. this year using stone. Tanzite has developed stone decking crafted without any plastic composite materials to redefine. Let me just fly through the end of the list here and be done. 
to see how stone decking doesn't scratch, stays cooler, isn't slippery, Damn. and has all the durability you would expect from stone, which is why it's guaranteed for life. At Tanzite.com, you will see how we develop stone to easily transform any ordinary wood deck. You can even make your deck waterproof for a dry space below. Versatile and adaptable, Tanzite is perfect for decks, stairs, over concrete, or ground applications. Visit Tanzite.com to start planning your project with a free 3D design and construction plan tailored to your space. Order a sample today to witness the incredible beauty and durability firsthand at Tanzite.com. That's T-A-N-Z-I-T-E.com. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's 30 seconds. For the best folks in town. Damn for. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by EXP Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. The Sportsocracy. Ice up, son. Ice up. We are back at the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. Top 13 defensive tackles for the 2024 NFL Draft. Lostradamus joining us from the Mullet Cave. At number seven, Mullet Mullet Manor. Manor. Get it right. Oh, excuse me, Mullet Manor. That, that is, it will only be now, re- from now on referred to as Mullet Manor. <laughs> okay, who's number seven on uh, your defensive tackles list? Dwayne Carter uh, out of Duke. I, I finally, defensive tackle, I finally gave up and just went, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride with my gut of Dwayne Carter's the one that I know is going to have a role in the NFL. He may never be a star, but I'm I'm going to take the safety there before I go five in a row that scare me to absolute death. They have the talent, and I know it, but there's a big red flag on every single one of them. Okay, at number eight. Rook Aurora Horro Horro, uh, defensive Aurora tackle. Horror out of, Horror Horror. I, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, out of Clemson, super raw, but, I, I mean, you see the high side. I'm just I'm afraid he's going to get overdrafted, and if he does, I, I'll I'll re I'll I'll reference somebody we mentioned earlier in the show, Amobi Okoye. He went too high, and he was so raw. He was asked to do so much off the jump, and his deficiencies just became so obvious, and it, it runs out of the league. That's my fear with him. Mm-hmm. Number nine. If injury, if I could turn injuries off in the NFL, this guy'd be at about four. Uh, Mason Smith out of LSU. The talent's there. I just I don't trust him to stay healthy, and, and the tape was way too inconsistent. The good was great. The the bad was either off the field or irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Okay, after Mason? Uh, Makai Wingo, also no. out of LSU. Uh, secret time, there's another LSU guy before the end of the list. <laughs> that defense was really talented to be so bad. And it was yep. awful, but good Lord, they had a lot of talent. They also have the number one defensive player in the next draft class. Oh, yeah, the uh, edge rusher. Yes. What's his name? Uh, Harold Perkins. I can't think. I think Harold Perkins, that's it. Good Lord, he's All good. All right, at number 11. Brandon Dorless. Uh, out of Oregon. I'm almost remiss to point him here, put him here because I think he's a 3-4 defensive end, but he didn't fit at mm-hmm. edge, and I had to get him somewhere because he belongs on one of these lists. So I almost shoehorned him in here. I don't think I did that last time. Okay, and number 12. Uh, Jordan Jefferson out of LSU. 
He's the one that's a, he's just a little bit behind the other guys. The talent's obvious, and and maybe Matt House was just that bad of a coordinator. I don't know that that he didn't put these guys in a position to succeed. It's just it's dumbfounding. You had that much talent, and you had that much difficulty playing defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and finally at number thirteen, uh, Leonard Taylor out of Miami. He's another one. The good's great. The bad is undraftable. So I, I just I don't know where to put him anymore. This class is not great once you get past the top seven or eight. And I know he's gonna go somewhere after that, probably pretty high after that. I just he's a lottery ticket. If you can get the most out of him, Houston Texans, you could do it and it would look like an absolute home run selection. If you don't, then you just set a third or fourth round pick on fire. All right, there is the uh, at ESPN Draft Nerd top 13 defensive tackles in the 2024 NFL Draft. Going to be a big week next week. We will rejoin you here on Monday. We'll have a live show on Monday, recorded show on Tuesday with our final mock draft on Travel Day, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, joining you live from the 2024 NFL Draft, Marcius Park. Detroit, Michigan, cannot wait. Y'all have a great weekend. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. And you're clear. Pulling into our Friday Stand afternoon for- and some showers, thunder showers around. Nothing too widespread, but some of the stronger storms may produce some gusty winds and small hail. There's a small risk of a tornado, upper 70s. Tonight, the chance of showers and thunderstorms continues mainly early, 55. A cooler Saturday, some fog early, then partly sunny and breezy, upper 60s. Then on Sunday, more rain possible with a high in the mid-50s. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by True Green. True Green is the easiest and most affordable way to get a beautiful lawn. All you have to do is water and mow. And to top it off, when you sign up for an annual plan by April 20th, you get one application free. Call or visit TrueGreen.com today. Restrictions apply. 63 Americans a day die by gun suicide. By storing our guns safely, lock unloaded and away from ammo we can give our loved ones a second chance at life learn more at nfamilyfire.org brought to you by brady and the ad council from the ingle studios this is espn Asheville, wpek w225cj fairview wmxf waynesville and iheart radio station no 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 i don't want to no 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 yeehaw And we're dead.